Hi guys, this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was in Assassin's Creed. Naruto and Sasuke were having their fight at the Valley of the End and Naruto was winning, but someone decided to interfere and Naruto was taken from his world before being commissioned for a mission by two ancient beings. Naruto is to go to a new world and learn from two factions before coming home. Welcome aboard! Chapter 6, Recruiting Water Country, 4 Days Later Naruto was moving through the trees of water country after paying for passage on a boat and was ensuring no one paid attention to them as they neared Kiri while the others tried to keep up with his pace. Once they came within seeing distance, Naruto had them stop, okay, we'll wait here till nightfall then I'll go in and rescue the people we are here for. Naruto ordered looking over the outside wall and seeing the security. So, we're just supposed to wait here? Anko asked incredulously that the others mirrored and Naruto merely nodded. Yes, I have numerous experiences sneaking into places with the protectors slash defenders unaware of my presence until it was either too late or never knew it was. I can get in there and extract the people and get back out before anyone would know what happened or I can go loud in another area to lessen the guards in the area they are being held in. The point is, more people means more chances to slip up and making it harder to get out later on. He explained knowing that simply him saying to stay wasn't going to cut it with them. After some reluctant nods, Naruto quickly gathered some food and made some clones to make a large seal array around their campsite before starting a fire that the others were concerned about before seeing the smoke hit an invisible roof and disappear letting them relax. Naruto didn't say a word to any of the others as he sat in meditation sensing out the entire area around them finding every hidden shinobi and watcher for the village and marking them with his eagle sense letting him find them no matter where they hid and remove them should they need to be. He also sensed the people he was there to get out and could tell they weren't doing that well, but that was natural from being imprisoned since it wasn't exactly good for your health most of the time. The upside is that he could sense the fire in them still, meaning they weren't mentally broken and there was no permanent body damage that he could sense nor was there any sign that the woman of the three had been mistreated by the men and he was glad for that since no woman should be subjugated to that and he didn't feel like destroying an entire village after only just coming back to his world. Couple hours later. Once the sun began to set, Naruto stood from his mediation and made five clones before they took off towards Kiri before Naruto followed them, I'll be back within the next two hours. Naruto stated to his group getting nods, though a few were reluctant, before he vanished from view and headed towards the walls of Kiri. Naruto casually walked up the wall while his clones were removing various guards that the world would be better off without. He knew this due to him being able to combine his Uzumaki sensing abilities with his eagle sense to see into a person's soul and emotions with his eyes thus he knew he needed to remove these guards since they weren't anything the world needed more of. He idly heard a few screams, most likely from his clones slamming the guards' faces into the ground before throwing them off the wall, as he reached the top and surveyed the area. He idly noted this place reeked of despair, greed, anger, and many other less than kind emotions and decided to ensure they weren't going to become a problem later. With that thought in mind, he created three more clones and gave them scrolls full of various explosives and sent them on their way to cause some chaos while he went for the Mizukage Tower to get at the lower levels which is where the prisoners he was interested in were located. The prisoners in question were the former Mizukage and rebel leader Mei Terumi, who defeated the previous Mizukage with the aid of some of her higher-up rebels, Mei's right-hand man Ao who was an ace tracker and had a transplanted Byakugan eye in his head, and Mei's bodyguard and fanboy Chojuro, one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. The reason for them being imprisoned was that Mei's top advisor was actually a greedy son of a bitch that only joined Mei because he felt it was the best way to get into a position to rule Kiri as he despised Ugura, the former Mizukage, just because he had the title not for his actions and then Mei because a woman had no business leading anything. He tolerated her being the leader of the rebels as most were loyal to her so trying to remove her wouldn't bold well for him. Then he made his move a year or so after Mei became Mizukage and rounded up his and Yagura's followers before pulling a coup leading us to here and now. As Naruto walked, he idly saw his clones grabbing and yanking different patrols into the darkness of the alleyways or stabbing them in the neck and dragging the bodies away before anyone noticed. He also had a clone on the wall with his rifle popping off targets on the roofs that would see something before they could call out or do anything to trigger an alarm. By the time he left with the prisoners, Kiri was going to be nearly crippled from the loss of manpower thus keeping their kage from trying to make demands later. As Naruto entered the tower, he idly flicked a pair of knives at the wall hearing the satisfying THUNKS of them embedding there before the wall shimmered and two umbu fell to the floor dead before the knives faded away. 
Naruto then paused as he got the memories of his clone sent for demolitions and unsealed another scroll before a detonator came out, which he clicked as he descended down the stairs causing explosions to occur all over the village and making alarms go off too. Outside Kiri. Anko and the others jumped up as explosions were heard and seen within the village including a large section of the village wall before they heard the alarms in the village going off, holy shit. What the hell did Naruto Kuen do? Anko asked rhetorically, not noticing she added the Kuen suffix to Naruto's name, before they moved to follow only for a clone to appear and stop them. Where do you think you're going? It asked as it stared at the group, boss told you all to stay here, he's just causing a bit of mayhem for the assholes running the village. It stated as it dared any of them to try and get past him. They didn't bother trying since they knew the clone could stop them even if they tried to split up. Good, now just wait here for boss to return. If he's on schedule then he should be back in the next 20 minutes or so. The clone stated as he checked a small pocket watch from his pocket before another explosion sounded off in the distance. Yup, he's on schedule. The clone stated with a smirk while the others just looked at the now ablaze village. Prison under Mizukich Tower. Naruto walked along past the various jail cells cutting the locks off the prisoners that were still alive and weren't justified in being there before instructing them to use the chaos to leave and head for wave country where he would get in touch with them later on about safety and security. The prisoners happily agreed before taking off while he went to the high security area. When he reached there, he found several umbu in front of him with their weapons drawn, halt. You will surrender UAHH. The captain started before Naruto held his hand out and an astral apple of Eden appeared before multiple yellow arcs of energy lashed out and struck all of the individuals in the head making them scream in pain before the arcs changed to white and the umbu began collapsing to the ground dead. Naruto merely shook his hand slightly before walking to the large metal door and pried it off the hinges before walking in and stopping at the cell with Mei in it, Mei Tarumi? He asked standing there with his back to the cell with Ao and Shojuro and saw Mei look up at him though she struggled since the shackles were chakra draining. What do you want? She asked weakly, but Naruto knew it was most likely her conserving her strength should he pose a threat. I'm here to free you and see if you would wish to join my village. I've already caused a lot of distractions via the explosions you no doubt heard and felt a short while ago and I've killed every ninja between here and the exit and my exit out of the village where my companions await to help me get you and your two companions out of the country and if you so desire, escort you to our village. Naruto stated honestly since he wasn't going to force the woman or her two allies into joining, but he hoped they would since they'd be hunted down otherwise. Mei looked up at him, and what village do you serve? She asked since she wasn't exactly willing to join IWA or Kumo since she had a bit of a score to settle with them. Kanoha. Naruto stated feeling her be a bit more at ease, at the very least I would like to get you out of here then we can discuss you coming to my village or not. He offered before he made two clones and they pried the cell doors off, ignoring the security tags meant to electrocute anyone who touched the bars, and the two clones walked into where Chajuro and Ao were while he walked into Mei's cell and proceeded to break her chains and get the shackles off her. Once she was unbound, he lifted her bridal style making her blush while the two clones had the two males on their backs and nodded before they proceeded to run out. Wait, my sword. Chojuro stated tiredly since he didn't want to leave it behind where some unworthy bastard of the Mizukage choosing would get their hands on it and Naruto smirked. Relax, we have it recovered by another clone and it's waiting for us on the first checkpoint out of here. He stated as they began ascending the stairs while the three looked at the various dead bodies of Umbu, Chunin, and Jonin that had various injuries from trying to stop Naruto and they realized that if this guy could get into the tower and down to them by himself then he was no pushover. Once they were out of the tower. Naruto and his clones moved to the rooftops heading towards the clone with his rifle out as he popped anyone that might catch a glimpse of them before turning and shooting a demolition pack a clone left in the opening causing it to explode and take a large section of the Umbu HQ with it diverting more attention away from Naruto and his clones as those sent to run interference popped and those on the farther reaches of the wall popped as well. When Naruto and his two escort clones arrived at the wall, the sniper popped and they began hustling out of the village as it was still burning from the explosions. When they landed outside the wall, the clones and Naruto ran to the rendezvous point where they found his clone and the others waiting for him. Upon arriving the clone handed Naruto a scroll and he looked at the others, not missing the three being surprised to see Kimamaro there since his clan was supposed to be dead, okay, let's hustle to the fishing village to the east of us. Our transport is waiting for us there. He stated making the others nod before they took off into the trees. 
Along the way, Mei looked up at her savior and blushed slightly since at her distance, even in the dark, she could make out facial features and his ghostly blue eyes were so enchanting and drawing her in before he looked at her and smiled, making her blush and it only worsened as she finally noticed the muscles in his arms, Cammy, he's ripped. She thought feeling the muscles in his arms tense and shift when he needed to cradle her more and the muscles subtly moving in his chest as he breathed. All in all, it was making her flustered. Her. The self-expert and pro on making people, usually men, flustered and embarrassed. It only got worse as he looked down at her and smiled before he turned back to looking where he was going. It took the group about an hour to reach the village before they quickly boarded a fishing vessel and set off. After setting Mei down to rest, Naruto approached the captain and shook his hand, thanks for doing this, Katsuhiro. Naruto stated with the now-named Katsuhiro nodding and waving him off. It's fine boss, besides after what you've done for us, how could we say no? He asked while the crew gave agreements making Naruto laugh before he went over to check on Mei and the other two. How are you holding up? He asked and the three gave grunts or nods, good, besides chakra exhaustion and some need for food and water, any other issues? He asked looking them over while Mei shook her head, Jojuro flexed his hand slightly and winced most likely from his hands being hurt either when they were captured or he was imprisoned and Ao frowned before shaking his head, all right, but I'm going to run a diagnostic on you three real quick just to be sure. He stated and they nodded before he did May first, knowing the other two would insist, and found besides some bruises and chakra depletion there was nothing. He then scanned Ao and saw his implanted Biakugan was not entirely attached, something he'd have to fix later, and he had a fracture on his sixth rib which he no doubt was blocking out due to his years of training. He then scanned Shojuro and saw that indeed a few of his fingers were healed improperly from being broken, some ligaments were being pressured from it, and his left rotator cuff wasn't healed properly. All of this meant that Shojuro put up one hell of fight or he was the one the interrogators thought could be broken easily. With that done, Naruto healed Mei first, much to his original companion's shock since they didn't know he could use medical jutsu, and then healed Ao. And then finally Chojuro with his taking longer since Naruto had to re-break his fingers to set them properly before healing them and then fixed up the other things before telling the three to rest. Naruto then stood and leaned against the railing looking out at the water as his group just looked at him, ask. Naruto stated as he just leaned there knowing they wanted some answers. What the hell did you do in that village? Anko asked slash demanded and the others nodded while Naruto just stood there. I killed several of their ninja, destroyed a good chunk of their major buildings, destroyed a large section of the wall, and freed several prisoners. Naruto stated calmly causing Anko to face fault before she got up and glared with a twitching eyebrow while Naruto didn't bat an eye and only removed his hood, making Mei blush in the process, I don't know what you were expecting, I told you this was a smash and grab when we were on the boat to water country. Smash and grab means we hit, we grab, and then run before anyone can know what the hell is going on. The explosions and my attacking several shinobi were the distractions while I entered the Mizukich tower and got these three out without anyone being able to report I was there. Naruto stated casually knowing there wasn't anyone that would be able to identify him to the Mizukich or anyone else that came snooping around. What the hell do you mean no one's going to know you were there? You blew up I don't know how much of the village and killed who knows how many of their shinobi. Hana exclaimed and Naruto just chuckled at her making her glare at him. You misinterpreted what I said, Hana-san. When I said no one would know I was there, I meant no one would know that I specifically was there meaning they can't tie it to me or Kanoha, and even if Mei and her confidants were to come to Kanoha, we have plausible deniability in that we can claim they were dropped at our doorstep where they came on their own free will and we had no reason to send them or trade them back to Kiri. Naruto stated analytically making a few widen their eyes in shock since not only was he right, but Kiri wouldn't have the muscle to try and make demands later anyway. See? So, for now relax since it's gonna be a bit of a boat ride before we get to land again. He stated as he sat on the deck and leaned against the railing as he processed the memories of the rest of the clones that popped once they left the mainland. Naruto barely had 10 minutes of relaxing before he felt Mei come over to him, what do you need Mei? He asked not opening his eyes and making her pause a moment before she sat beside him. Why did you help us? She asked since from what she learned from the interactions and such, this wasn't a mission ordered by the Hokage and he had chosen to do this of his own volition. Well for one, you three should never have been imprisoned since you didn't do anything to warrant it. Two, I had my own problem with that so-called Kage since he's allied with some enemies of mine. Three, you would be helpful to the village and something else later. And four, I have a bit of a soft spot for strong, beautiful, young women. 
He stated with a smile making her blush almost as red as her hair. May blushed as not only did he say she was strong and beautiful, but also a young woman, I see. Thank you. She stated trying to control her blush and Naruto merely smiled making her blush a bit more. It's no trouble May, I was glad to do it. Now you should rest since I doubt, you're back to full strength yet. Naruto stated making her nod before she smirked and leaned against him with her head on his shoulder making him chuckle, I didn't know you were so bold May, if you wanted to lay on me you just had to ask. I wouldn't have turned down such a beautiful woman. He stated teasingly making her blush before she just laid there while the other women were glaring slightly at the scene. Next morning. The group woke from their rooms below deck to shouting, shore up the supports and reel it in double time or we risk losing the net. They heard Naruto shout as they awoke before they headed out to see Naruto there helping the fishermen, but the women had to blush as he was doing this shirtless giving them a prime view of his well-earned fit body and it was only worse for them as the water was getting on him making droplets go down his chest. Naruto helped the fishermen hoist their catch onto the ship before cheering with the others at the hall they had. Naruto patted a few of the sailors on their backs before turning to see the others, ah, morning sleepyheads. Naruto greeted casually while taking a cloth to dry the salt water out of his hair. How long have you been up? Anko asked since it was still early and he seemed to have been awake for a while. Naruto thought for a minute, oh, about three or four hours. He stated shocking them since it wasn't even eight yet. Naruto merely raised an eyebrow at their faces, I'm not sure why you are surprised, I don't need that much sleep thanks to my healing factor so why waste the time that I could be useful. He asked not seeing their point even though he could see Shikamaru's enjoyment of cloud watching as there were days Naruto would do just that to relax, it wasn't like he was getting any older. Two days later. Naruto stood on the railing as the ship pulled into one of the ports of Wave Country and decided to be chivalrous and help the women off the boat before walking to the wharfmaster. The others watched them talk for a minute before Naruto shook his hand and waved the others to follow him. Naruto led the group to a large building modeled after a hotel but there were several women dressed, less than modestly outside, while a few wore what could only generously be called underwear, and they all smiled and fawned over Naruto when they saw him making him chuckle before he entered along with the others. They entered to see a fully furnished sitting and check-in area with even more of the women inside before another woman with long dark purple hair, pink eyes, full red lips, black heels, and an elegant red dress came down and smiled at Naruto as she came up and kissed his cheek, Arya. He stated kissing her hand making her smile. Welcome back Naruto, did you decide to finally let the girls thank you for everything? The now named Arya asked making several of the women perk up and look at Naruto lustfully. Naruto chuckled, no, I'm afraid not. He stated making several of the women groan and pout making him chuckle more, I wanted you to spread the word that some refugees from Kiri may be on their way here, so be on the lookout for them and for any Kiri ninja that are sent after them. He stated making Arya and the girls lose all playfulness and nod, good, some of the people with me will be staying here for a bit, I trust they will be looked after while I am gone? He asked and they all nodded with a smile, good, thank you. He stated as they nodded and Naruto left with his group while Ao was blushing when Arya winked at him. Naruto then pulled a pocket watch out that was silver with glowing blue numbers and the assassin's emblem on the cover. Naruto nodded to himself before he turned to the others, okay, you all wait here, I make the next stop alone and I should be back in a few hours or so. He stated shocking them, what the hell do you mean you're going alone? Why the hell are we even here? Anko shouted and Naruto merely raised an eyebrow, you're here because Tsunade felt more comfortable having people with me, but you all can't keep up with me and I'm infiltrating another enemy village before taking off back to here. There is literally nothing you can do to help me with in the next area except wait here for me to return. Naruto stated nonchalantly as he looked at them. Where are you going? May asked curiously and Naruto smirked. Am a gay cure. Naruto stated casually as if it was no big deal. Now you all wait here and I'll be back tonight at the latest. Naruto stated as he called one of the girls over. Please show them where they can stay and behave. He stated then mentioned and the woman smiled and nodded as Naruto took off at blinding speeds aka Hiroshin. Anko and the others had their eyes twitching while Kimamaro was disappointed he couldn't help his new boss. The woman Naruto called over just giggled and led them to a nearby hotel to stay for the night. Amage cure, five minutes later. Naruto stood on the wall of the village hidden in the rain staring at the tall building that he knew contained what was left of the Akatsuki and was planning to free two former members, Konan and Itachi. 
From what his spies had gleaned, there was apparently a minor civil war in the organization. Apparently, the asshole responsible for Kurama being released on Kanoha, Minato's former student Abito, had desired the eyes of the leader of the Akatsuki, Naruto's legit cousin Nagato, and both he and his second-in-command Conan didn't agree with that and then Itachi joined in as he didn't want Abito to survive. Things were pretty even until Abito used Edo Tensei, sacrificing some no-named lackey, to call Madara Uchiha himself and the fight quickly turned in favor of Abito. By the end of it, Nagato was dead and Conan and Itachi were imprisoned with the first being for a possible tool for enjoyment and the second so he had a spare set of Sharingan eyes if needed. The impressive feat was that the three had defeated Madara, mostly thanks to Nagato's paths and Itachi using a special weapon he had called the Tatsuka Blade that he combined with his Susanoo to permanently seal Madara away, so now he was here both to take the two away and send a message to the others not to mess with him. With that in mind, he quickly began jumping across the rooftops towards the tall building while sending some clones around the village both to scout and to set up some surprises for them. Within 10 minutes, Naruto was within the building and immediately killed three guards that were standing there before he found his way down to the lower levels looking for the prison cells. He paused partway down as his clones sounded off that they were ready to cause some havoc when he was ready to get the others out. He was about to continue when he felt other presences down near the two he was there to rescue and frowned as he felt demonic energy coming from two. With that knowledge, Naruto picked up the pace and hurried faster to the cells while making a few more clones for this building. It took him only a few minutes to reach the prison area and he moved towards his main targets first and found Conan there, tied and wearing rags for clothing. Naruto grabbed the door and tore it off before entering and breaking the chains holding her, it's alright Conan, I'm getting you out of here. He stated as he saw her turn her slightly dull eyes toward him. Who are you? She asked weakly. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. He stated seeing recognition in her eyes before a voice cut through the area. Naruto Kuwen? Spoke a soft feminine voice that Naruto vaguely recognized and quickly made a shadow clone before putting Conan in his arms making said woman blush and the clone took off. Naruto then went to another cell and tore the door off finding a raven-haired woman with D-cup breasts, a slim yet fit body, full lips, a firm ass, and slender legs. The woman currently had a blindfold with seals on it over her eyes and she too was in rags. Naruto went up to her and grabbed the blindfold making her tense, it's alright Itomi, it really is me. He stated pulling her blindfold off when she relaxed and saw her onyx eyes staring up at him though they seemed a bit dim, it's been a while, but let's get you out of here before we talk. He stated breaking the chains holding her down and lifted her making blush a bit before he made a clone and the clone took her before taking off. After ensuring the clones weren't being followed, Naruto went to another two cells and was surprised to find two people he thought for sure would be dead, Han and Rashi of IWA, the five and four tails Jinchuriki respectfully. Each man had chains around their arms, legs, chest, and neck while there were seals on their arms and legs too, Han and Rashi of IWA, I thought you'd be dead by now. Naruto stated with the surprise being evident. Rashi, an older man with a crimson beard to match his hair, snorted, would be if the fools had realized they needed a specific order of tailed beasts before their goal could be met. Apparently since they have the three and six tails, they have to have the nine tails or the one and two tails to not screw up the statue's power. Rashi stated knowing that they had tried to drain Han and himself and the statue wouldn't even start the draining and when they tried to force it they nearly caused the statue to destroy itself. Yes, for all their talk of being dangerous, they aren't that bright. Han, another older man with a scar from his right cheekbone to his chin with silver hair, stated from his cell. Well, I guess I should get you out of here then. Naruto stated as two clones appeared and tore their cell doors off before getting them out of their restraints and pulled them over their shoulders, names Naruto by the way, I used to be the container of the QB. Naruto stated shocking them before the clones began moving with them over their shoulders. Naruto then went through the cells finding anyone else that could slash should be released before heading further in and saw the Akatsuki members gathered at the statue, besides Abito and Kisame, there was also some plant man named Zetsu, Kakazu of the Hidden Waterfall Village, Haydn of the Hot Water Village, and apparently, they had taken Orochimaru back, which no doubt was because he had plenty of cannon fodder to throw at people if needed and all he would want is Sasuke in exchange. Naruto idly made a clone to go and find Nagato's body and take it away while he observed the now six members, it would seem that both Sasori and Deidara have failed. Abito stated looking over the group getting surprised reactions from the others. Not only that, but it would seem that the Kyuubi Jinchuriki was the one responsible and killed them both. 
Setsa stated with the two halves, switching who was talking and when. I thought the brat was missing for the past five years? Kisame stated as he hadn't thought the kid was all that special after he and Itachi tried to take him the first time before Jiraiya interfered. It would appear he has returned and has some new skills and abilities that we were not aware of him having. He recently fought the Kanoha 11, Kakashi Hataki, a few foreign ninja, and then a small army of ninja ranging from Chunin to Umbu without taking a single hit. The 11 were beaten in various ways, Kakashi was broken to the point that his shinobi career is pretty much over, the foreign ninja he seemed to toy with while showing he could use ice and lava releases and jutsu without hand seals, and the army was killed by him without any use of clones or assistance from others and he used various weapons and styles we've never seen as well as summoning spectral wolves that killed enemies for him. Abito reported having gone over everything from Zetsu making the other look in shock while Orochimaru was rethinking his decision on who to have as a vessel. There's also the fact that he claimed Kyubi was no longer inside of him and was dead. The black Setsu stated catching everyone's attention. I thought Abiju was unable to die. They merely reform after a year for each tale they have. Orochimaru stated wondering if perhaps Naruto was some version of a Hanyu and thus would be an even better future body for him since he could have the Uzumaki bloodline as well as a strong body that could potentially last longer than the others. It is unknown if he is telling the truth or not, regardless he will still need to be captured to learn where the Kyubi is if he does not contain it anymore. Abito stated before clapping could be heard and they all looked around trying to find the source. Impressive that you were able to find out some things, but you haven't even scratched the surface of what I can do. Naruto stated as he concealed himself and knew it was pissing the group off especially Abito as he was looking around with his one Rinnegan eye and one Sharingan eye and couldn't find the source of the voice, how does it feel Abito? How does it feel to have the so-called all-powerful Sharingan and the Rinnegan and yet you can't see something right near you? Naruto asked making, said Uchiha growl. You can't hide forever. Abito shouted as he kept looking around before laughter filled the room. Who's hiding? Naruto stated as he stood on the statue's left pinky finger causing them all to turn and see him there, S-rank ninja and you can't even sense me standing right here. Naruto mocked before he frowned and caught Orochimaru's tongue as it tried to grab him before pulling Orochimaru to him and punched him in the face sending him across the room, sorry, I don't swing that way, maybe try hiding since he's so obsessed with a male deity, he may actually be glad. Naruto stated mockingly making Haydn growl and Kakazu and Kisame to suppress their laughter. Abito was about to move an attack to subdue Naruto when the sound of multiple blades coming out came clear in his and the other ears and they saw several clones with their hidden blades red to skewer their throats. Everyone froze in shock that he got the drop on them all twice, now, I could kill you all now, but I want to see you all squirm like worms on a hook so I think I will just bid you farewell and good day now that I've retrieved what I came here for. Naruto stated as he faded from their view and the clones popped making them relax slightly before several explosions echoed out above them signifying the village was experiencing some trouble. Outside Amage Cure, just after Naruto vanished. Naruto appeared on the hill outside the village next to the people he rescued and flared his chakra causing several explosions to go off destroying part of the walls and setting several buildings on fire, let's go. Naruto stated before he and his clones all took off back towards Wave. Once they were a short distance away, Naruto made more clones and had them scatter in all directions to throw off trackers and continued on towards Wave. Naruto stopped again 20 minutes later to check on his passengers, are the four of you alright besides chakra exhaustion and the usual issues of being imprisoned? Naruto as his clones checked them over while they each nodded and Naruto then turned to the two females of the group and gave an unasked question and the two shook their heads making him feel some relief that they weren't subjugated to that at least. Good, we'll rest here for 10 minutes then we'll continue. He stated as he made more clones to make an airtight perimeter while he got some ration bars for the four and some soldier pills to give them a bit of energy back. Itomi, also known as Itachi when she lived in the village, looked at Naruto in wonder as he was a far cry from the young boy she watched over in Umbu and then saw briefly with Kisame years ago and couldn't stop the question that came, Naruto Kuen, what happened to you? Itomi asked as she saw the veteran before her not the child still learning when she last saw him. Naruto, who was leaning against a tree and staring at the sky, sighed, much. I've been trained by several people and trained hundreds more and made sure I was the best in all aspects. Naruto stated not taking his eyes from the sky, but that was then and this is now and I plan to build my group in these lands and have already recruited some good candidates. Naruto stated piquing Itomi's interest. Is that why you rescued us? 
Rashi asked inquisitively with narrowed eyes along with Han not liking that they were rescued just to be put under another's command. Naruto shook his head, no, I rescued you since they had no right to imprison you and because I wanted to piss off those assholes I freed Itomi because she can come home and I freed Conan as she was betrayed and shouldn't have been imprisoned after I get you all to safety and you rest up you'll be free to do as you please so long as you don't cause trouble for where I'm taking you or Kanoa. Naruto stated wanting to be clear that he was saving them, but not expecting them to follow him. So, you went through all the trouble of freeing us, just to let us go? Han asked incredulously, and Naruto nodded. Yes, I'm not going to force you to join me or anything and I'm certainly not going to force you to help Kanoa so you will be free to leave and go wherever you wish after I get you some place safe and you've rested up. Naruto stated as he ate his own ration bar. Five minutes later had Naruto and his clones moving again as a set of clones clean up their rest area and remove their trail with Naruto pumping chakra to his legs to go faster while adding several shunshins. Wave country, four hour later. Naruto and his clones arrived in wave country and went straight for the brothel to see Arya. Upon walking in, several of the girls came and took Han, Rashi, Itomi, and Conan and began checking them over for any wounds, they will need rest and keep their stress to a minimum, they've been through enough and get them some actual food and water since all they've had today that I am aware of is a ration bar. They also have some people looking for them so try to keep them hidden until they are either well enough to travel or I leave here if they are coming with me. Naruto informed and instructed making Arya nod her head. Of course, Naruto. She stated with a small smile as she went to help with checking on Itomi and Konan as Naruto walked out. As Naruto was walking through town, giving and getting nods as he passed people, he paused at the local bar as he heard a ruckus inside and walked in to see a couple of thuggish men clearly drunk and demanding more alcohol and giving the waitresses a less than a desirable bit of attention. Naruto, being the owner of said establishment, wasn't happy about that and approached them, that's enough, you either leave walking or leave being carried out. Naruto stated walking up and pulling the waitress away. Why don't you shut up before we put you down? One of the drunks stated as he tossed away the bottle he was drinking. Naruto sighed and turned to the waitresses and other patrons, please move away while I remove these people. Naruto stated seriously and most of the patrons who were wave residents and knew who Naruto was, quickly moved along with the waitresses before the other patrons, minus the drunks, followed suit. Naruto turned to the drunks and cracked his knuckles audibly before approaching them. Meanwhile, outside. Anko and Karinai were walking around looking at the town that apparently not only gladly worked for Naruto, but practically hailed him as if he was the greatest person to ever live. However, from what Sasuke had told them about Wave before Team 7 had interfered, they could understand that and then there was the fact that it seemed to be prospering even more than it had been after Team 7 had left and they discovered why as it was revealed Naruto had bought all the businesses for twice their worth and let the people keep their jobs at increased pay and began renovating the entire village to what it was now and then moved to the rest of the island country and did the same. Turning the whole place into a bustling shipping empire and tourist area. I can't believe Naruto did all of this in less than a year. Anko stated looking over the shops ranging from the luxurious to the common, which was smart because it could cater to the lower class people or the higher class. I know, it looks and feels like this place has always been this way. Though I'm not sure how I feel about the brothels, gambling dens, and fight clubs he seems to be sponsoring. Karinai stated causing Anko to laugh. Karinai looked at her friend strangely before she asked, What is so funny? He probably runs them for information Kore chan Pillow talk, drunks, and people just bragging for the hell of it make easy sources of information. Then count in the fact that this place is a major trade hub now and a tourist area means he's possibly getting information from all over the place. Anko stated making Karinai widen her eyes knowing she was right, it was mainly why Kanoha had gambling dens and the like, though admittedly they were in a more lawless part of Kanoha since they just didn't have the ninja to spare to get total order in it. Before Karina could respond, the door to the bar they were coming towards burst open and a man was thrown out with his left arm being bent in the wrong direction at every juncture showing his arm was broken very badly. The two Kunoichi raised an eyebrow at the scene before four more were thrown out with two having broken legs, one had a broken slash dislocated hip evidenced by his heel being next to his ear with his toes behind his head, and the last had multiple bruises, two black eyes, a broken nose, and both of his arms looked to be out of socket. They were also bloody from different scrapes, cuts, and other injuries. The door then opened again showing Naruto dusting his hands off before he whistled and five large men came almost out of nowhere wearing suits, sunglasses, and earpieces and had a pair of some kind of metal object over their knuckles on one hand, yes boss? 
The biggest and only one wearing a tie asked in a deep intimidating voice. Please escort these gentlemen out of wave and ensure they have no intention of coming back. Naruto stated and the five nodded while cracking their knuckles making the barely conscious men gulp as they were picked up and taken away. Naruto then waved to the people who stopped to see before they went about their business again and Naruto took a small sack out of a seal and tossed it into the doorway of the bar where it landed on said bar with a thud that should cover the damages. Naruto called out and got a thanks boss as his reply before Naruto rolled his neck and walked off. Anko and Karinai, being too curious, peeked inside the bar only to widen their eyes as it looked like a bomb went off as several tables and chairs were broken, blood was all over, and there were broken bottles on the ground too and since Naruto didn't have a scratch on him it meant all of the blood was from the five individuals. They broke from their musings as a waitress slash barmaid came up, hello, welcome to bar none. Please excuse the mess, our owner and benefactor had to handle some rather rude patrons that couldn't hold their drink and kept harassing the other girls. If you would like to wait for a table, one should be ready in five minutes or you can sit at the bar. She stated with a warm smile as she curtsied and walked off to attend to the patrons who still had tables. Anko and Karinai blinked as the barkeep came out from behind the bar with a couple of the security guys that looked like the ones from a minute ago and moved all the mess to the center of the place, which did indeed take about five minutes, before a seal glowed and the mess was gone. The barkeep then went to the far wall and bit his thumb before wiping blood in a straight line making a seal array appear that glowed before new tables and chairs poofed into place allowing the current patrons to retake their seats and they acted like nothing had happened which meant to Karinai and Anko that this wasn't the first time Naruto had done something like this. The two then looked at each other and went in the direction Naruto had gone. Back at the brothel. Itomi and Konan were currently relaxing in a bath as a few girls acted as attendants, which made the two a little uncomfortable at first, but when they realized they could still barely move, they relented. As they were being aided though, they felt a question that needed to be asked, why is Naruto Kuan having you work here? He's not forcing you, is he? Itomi asked and the girls paused before laughing as if she just told a joke. Kami no, we were among the women that actually enjoyed what we did so we voluntarily stayed here to work and some of us came from another town after Naruto broke up a group of thugs that were buying women from their pimps and then trying to turn them into drug mules. Those that didn't like this job joined one of the other businesses Naruto has and have been happy since and some have even found that special someone. Although if given the chance all of us would jump Naruto in an instant. One of the girls stated before they all blushed and the two looked confused. Um, what? Itomi asked unsure how to respond and the same could be said for Conan. Sorry, it's just one of the girls spied on him in the hot springs and then told the rest of us. Let's just say that Naruto is well developed and leave it at that. The same attendant stated with a mild giggle making Conan and Itomi blush slightly. The other attendants giggled at their reaction, yeah, but he's not going to take advantage of us or our hero worship or something like that that and has been very abstinent. Plus, we'd never try to get in the way of him being with Miss Tsunami and Haku. She stated with a small smile since she and the others respected Naruto and liked him for respecting them as women not as, well, the other thing people saw them as. He's always been loyal to anyone who had a place in his heart, few as it is. Itomi stated absently making the others blink. I was one of the umbu that looked after him when he was a boy, he's always been loyal to anyone who was loyal to him. She stated with a small smile remembering Naruto as a boy swearing to keep her safe when he was older. The other girls didn't comment and merely helped the two finish bathing before drying them and getting them dressed before taking them to a room to rest. Back with Naruto. Naruto was walking towards the hotel having already checked on Inari and Tazuna knowing Tsunami would want to know. Inari was doing well on his training while Tazuna was keeping the place going with some more builds and plans to expand later. Right now, Naruto was going to get Kimimaro as his last place to visit on this outing was Orochimaru's hideouts and he was looking for some specific individuals that he was sure Kimimaro could give him the locations of. He found Kimimaro sitting near a field of flowers and a lake meditating, but that changed when Naruto approached and Kimimaro quickly stood to face him, Naruto-sama, what can I do for you? He asked professionally as he accepted Naruto was his superior. Naruto waved him off, relax Kimimaro, I don't need a drone as much as a friend and ally. He stated letting Kimimaro relax a bit, now, I need your help since I have a vague idea of where Orochimaru keeps his bases, but I don't know where they are specifically and there are a couple of people in his bases that I want to add to my own forces. Naruto stated making Kimimaro blink and nod his head. Of course, Naruto-sama, when would you like to leave? 
Kimimaro stated seriously and Naruto knew he wasn't going to just sit around making Naruto sight with a smile. Within the hour, if you have anything you need or want look around the village shops and ask for them and I'll handle the cost. Naruto stated making Kimimaro nod. Should we expect Orochimaru? Kimimaro asked since even though he was strong he was still technically recovering and had yet to see what his new master was capable of. Naruto shook his head, no, the snake is in aim at the moment no doubt recovering from the small beating I gave him and the scare I gave him and the other Akatsuki. It will be a couple of weeks before he'd be able to leave due to them not knowing where I am and want to ensure I'm not in the village or surrounding country. Naruto stated making Kimimaro nod before heading off to the village and Naruto merely stood in front of the lake, you're not going Anko. Naruto suddenly stated making Anko and Karinai come out from behind two trees. Anko growled and marched up to him only to stop as he turned towards her and froze at his gaze. It wasn't a normal one that he gave, but it was like looking into the eyes of a predator that you knew could kill you and wasn't going to hesitate to do it if wanted. Naruto stared at her for a long moment before turning back to the lake, you're not going. He stated before he turned and walked past her with her still rooted in place. Karinai walked up and saw Anko trembling a little before she suddenly sat and took some deep breaths as Karinai looked after her. What the hell was that? Anko thought frantically as she'd never seen eyes like that before. Back with Naruto he was walking around checking over some things as he waited for Kimimaro to be ready to go and everything was running smoothly especially with some of the extra protection coming from Iron Country courtesy of Mifune. Naruto had requested and paid the man for it as he didn't want the Akatsuki getting too comfortable with the idea of coming here and causing mayhem to draw him out. He also had arrangements made for any of the prisoners from Kiri coming here since they'd need a place to sleep, work, and everything else so long as they didn't cause trouble for the people. Then there was going over the different reports and information coming in from the traders and fishermen. All of this amounted to half an hour's worth of work before Naruto met Kimimaro at the bridge and the two headed off with Naruto having Arya inform the others about him being back in a day or so. As they jumped, Naruto suddenly landed beside Kimimaro and touched his shoulder before they disappeared and reappeared near Rice Country's border. As Kimimaro tried to get his bearings from the disorientation and keep his footing, Naruto spoke, All right Kimimaro, I'm looking for three people specifically, their names are Yugo, Karen, and Guren. Naruto stated making Kimimaro widen his eyes slightly. I know where all three are, Naruto-sama, they should all be in the base near the border with the hot water country. Kimimaro stated and Naruto nodded with a smirk. Good, there's two people I want to get from there anyway. Naruto stated before the two set off in that direction. Three hours later. Upon arriving where Kimimaro indicated, Naruto saw a large ravine with a chakra seal over an area which he assumed was the entrance. Nodding to Kimimaro, the two jumped down and landed outside the base before a large lumbering man came out covered in the cursed seal marks and madness in his eyes. Kimimaro instantly took a defensive stance while Naruto merely stood there as the man let the cursed seal go to level 2 turning him into a large ogre looking creature and he charged while Naruto merely walked forward. When the ogre man was about to slam his fist on Naruto, Naruto quickly whipped up his revolver and fired before holstering it as he walked past the ogre that was still going before it collapsed to the ground with a small hole in his forehead while the entire back half of his head was blown away. Kimimaro only stared wide-eyed at the scene for a few moments before he quickly moved to catch up with Naruto. The two entered with Naruto seeing all the enemies and hidden traps with his eagle vision while Kimimaro was watching for any threats to his master. Naruto appreciated the sentiment but it was unneeded since not only could he handle any of the fools in this place but he could also see where they all were. Naruto merely walked towards the area he could sense Karen in. The reason he wanted to get her was because he knew she had Uzumaki blood in her and he wasn't about to leave a member of his kin in the hands of Orochimaru. Especially since he was just going to dissect an experiment on her the first opportunity he got. Arriving at the room, Naruto entered as Kimimaro kept a lookout for any threats and they found Karen there looking over a clipboard before she looked at them. Naturally, the moment she did she dropped the clipboard with wide eyes as she saw Kimimaro alive and someone whose chakra was screaming power while also giving off a warm and comforting aura, Ki Kimimaro. Yo you're alive. Karen stuttered out as Kimimaro took position by the door and Naruto approached. Yes, I am alive thanks to my new master, and he has an interest in you. Kimimaro stated as he waited by the door as Naruto got closer to her. You are Karen Uzumaki correct? Naruto asked as he pulled his hood down making her pale when he said her last name, I'll take that as a yes, do you know who I am? 
He asked as he stood before her. Why yes, you're Naruto Uzumaki. Orochimaru had you on a list of desired test specimens that he wanted to acquire. She stated unsure if it was true that he was a true Uzumaki and not someone just having decided to take the name. Good, then you know that we are of the same clan and that your place is with the clan and not Orochimaru, who you know will just dissect and or experiment on you once he learns of you being Uzumaki. Naruto stated making her blanch at the thought since she had seen and ashamedly helped in some of the experiments Orochimaru had done and looked down. Naruto knew she was struggling since many villages would do just about anything to get a pure-blooded Uzumaki to make into a breeding factory, I know you have to have at least the Uzumaki sensor gene, you weren't surprised by us coming in, you were just surprised at who came in so please don't try to deny that you are an Uzumaki and it should also tell you that you can trust me. Naruto stated seriously knowing she could sense his emotions and chakra and knew it was like night and day between him and Orochimaru. Karen bit her lip, a nervous habit she had and it made Naruto think she was cute, as she thought on the pros and cons since if she did this then Orochimaru was going to be pissed, but she'd be with someone that was family even if it was distant and she could be trained adequately to defend herself instead of the mediocre medic combat training Kabuto had provided her. Of course, pissing off Orochimaru was both a bonus and a negative since she didn't want to be on the receiving end of his wrath, but the bastard had earned it. She continued to weigh the options for several minutes before she took a breath and nodded to him, yes, I. I will join you cousin. She stated with a small smile and Naruto returned the smile, which added a bit of red to Karen's face, and he motioned her to follow him as they went back towards the door. We need to get Guren and Yugo from here then I need to get to your prison cells as there are two people there that I wish to also take away from here. Naruto stated pulling his hood back up making Karen pale slightly at Yugo but she recovered since Kimamaro could keep him in line. Who are the two you want to free? She asked unable to keep her curiosity at bay and Naruto smiled, not that they could see it. Miram the Valkyrie and Melona the Demon Rabbit. He stated making the two stop dead in their tracks and stare at him in disbelief. I can help both of them with their problems and will not leave them here to be tortured by Orochimaru and made worse than they already are. He stated in a tone that allowed no argument and the two nodded before following him while Karen made comments about which way to go. Coming to another room, Naruto opened the door only to catch a crystal blade coming right at him with his hand stopping it an inch from his face, I said not to disturb me. An angry female voice shouted from in the room. Naruto merely looked at Kimimaro, who had a fond smile on his face, as he pushed the door open and dropped the blade. The woman inside turned as she heard the blade clatter and gasped with wide eyes as she saw the man she loved there with Karen and an unknown male, Kekimimaro kun She asked hesitantly and Kimimaro smiled at one of his few friends he had in service to Orochimaru. Hello Guren, it's been a while. He stated before he was promptly tackled by said woman and taken into a vice-like hug as she cried into his shoulder and chest. Kimimaro merely blinked and pat her back unsure of how to deal with this. Naruto merely chuckled, seems she valued you more than a friend does, Kimimaro. Naruto stated with a smirk making Kimimaro blink olishly before he blushed as did Guren despite the situation, Guren, you can catch up with Kimimaro later, but we need to go and I need to know if you're willing to leave Orochimaru. Naruto stated seriously and Guren merely looked at him before tightening her arms around Kimimaro. I'm not leaving Kimimaro Kuen. She stated matter-of-factly and Naruto nodded and led them to the deeper sections of the base. It took about 10 minutes, with a piece of that being from Naruto reacting and killing any patrolling guards that they came near or that came out of a room after they had passed and arrived at the lower dungeon area. His companions were shocked that he was so efficient at killing since they saw no wasted movement or time as he quickly killed them and moved them out of view. Upon reaching the lower levels, Naruto saw rows of caged doors and sensed the beings within and promptly started breaking the locks of multiple doors along the hallway while walking. After about the 30th door, Naruto had his group move behind him and turned around to address the doors, Orochimaru is away for at least another week, you have that much time to do whatever the hell you want with the base and all of his loyal subordinates still here. However, if you come after us, then you will die. Naruto stated before walking further in as the doors creaked open before the occupants came out and looked around before grinning and heading for the upper levels of the base planning to get some revenge on those who imprisoned them. Back with Naruto and them, they found the first prisoner he wanted and banged on the door before opening it, your Yugo, right? Naruto asked before he caught a large fist before it could hit him. 
Naruto merely stared at the crazed enraged expression on Yugo's face as he was halfway transformed into a cursed state and Naruto didn't bat an eyelash before he backhanded Yugo and slammed his head into the door denting the door before tossing him into the wall opposite the door making his group gawk at him since no one, not even Orochimaru, had manhandled Yugo like that. Yugo groaned as the curse form receded revealing a red-headed boy that was somewhat bulky and looked around before his eyes widened at seeing Kimimaro, K. Kimimaro? You're alive. He stated shocked to see his one and only friend while Kimimaro smiled. Yes, Naruto-sama was able to bring me back. We came here to recruit you to his service. Kimimaro stated motioning to Naruto, who Yugo turned towards and studied. I see, but I... I can't be controlled. Yugo stated sadly looking down before he felt a hand on his shoulder and looked to see Naruto in front of him. I am not here to control you, Yugo, I am here to help you. I have a theory on what is causing your outbursts and problems, but before I can do anything I want the Hokage, Tsunade of the Sanin, to examine you and ensure there's not a medical reason since I don't want to try something and it only make it worse. If you come with me, I promise I will do all in my power to help you and if there is no cure or way to fix it, then I promise I will put you down before you can harm someone. Naruto stated seriously ensuring Yugo knew he wasn't a servant or slave if he joined him but a comrade and would get help one way or the other to ensure he was free of his curse. Yugo stared at Naruto for a few moments before finding no deceit in his eyes and nodded his head slowly making Naruto smile, excellent, now come, we have two more to get out of here then we can leave. Naruto stated before turning and walking further down the hall before stopping at two doors next to each other that were sealed up tighter than Yugo's was. Naruto merely eyed the doors before he grabbed them and tore them off the hinges with little effort, making his followers gawk at him before he tossed them aside. Naruto merely stepped back and waited, I'm looking for two people named Melona and Miram. Naruto stated hearing some shuffling before someone stepped out of the right door and showed a girl that looked younger than Kono, though he knew she wasn't, with light blue hair and azure eyes coming out wearing a red armored bikini with her ass showing in a drape between her breasts and crotch with two straps around her midriff and waist holding the cloth secured. Her hands were in red forearm gloves, her left shoulder had a small red pauldron, her legs were in mid-thigh black stockings with red armored calf boots, a red armored choker protecting her neck, a red V-horned helmet that only covered her forehead and had armored straps around the head to hold it in place, and two red armored earmuffs that had two ivory teeth going along her jawline and two white wings fanning out the back of them. From the left door, he saw a large-breasted girl with bluish lavender eyes with a plush-shaped pupil, pink hair that seemed to also form rabbit ears and hands over her breasts, pink eyebrows that were hidden partially in her hair, pink lips, two permanent blush marks on her cheekbones, and cream-colored skin come forward. She was dressed in a pink jacket top that was cut so it only came under her armpits and showed her breasts except where her hair hands covered and had purple accents with a pink heart just under her throat. On the shoulders were two pauldrons that looked like an eye with a large white circle around a gray iris with a black pupil in the center. The lower half was in a pink dress that was cut to show her midriff and ribs that had a dark purple undergarment that covered her womanhood with her but being on almost full display. Her cream-colored legs were bare except for a pair of boots shoes that were two shades of pink and had the same eye design as her shoulders on the top of the shoe. All in all, the first girl looked cute and sexy while the second looked drop-dead gorgeous, a pleasure to meet you both. Naruto stated bowing his head lightly to show he wasn't ogling them like he knew other idiots would. What do you want? Melona, the pink-haired woman, asked crossing her actual arms over her large bust while Miram, the blue-haired girl, looked a little afraid. Well, I freed you in hopes that you would join me and a group I am building. Not only would you be free from the snake pedophile, but I can help you train and use your powers beyond what you know of and maybe help you with some other issues you may be dealing with like I am with Yugo. Naruto stated making Melona smirk at the nickname for Orochimaru while Miram giggled a little. Okay, say I believe you. What's to stop me from just leaving and living free? Melona asked, moving her hands to her hips. The fact that Orochimaru and Kabuto will hunt you down and you know fully well you couldn't handle both of them. You could probably handle Kabuto but it would probably be a battle of attrition and you'd be exhausted afterwards and probably be caught either by Orochimaru or someone else that takes an unhealthy interest in you, while facing the snake would mean Orochimaru would toy with you for a while before just capturing you and you'd be right back here all over again only with more security and more pain waiting. Naruto stated seriously making her have to concede his point. Well, shit, you have a point. Alright, but if I find you're as bad or worse than the snake fucker, I'm going to melt you. Understand? Melona stated glaring heatedly and Naruto shrugged. Sure, 
Whatever makes you feel better. Naruto stated before turning to Miram, who merely nodded shyly, Good, then let's get out of here since I already had a couple clones raiding their supplies and weapons so anything you two are missing should be retrieved already. Naruto stated before turning and walking back towards the way they came making the group all look at each other before they moved to catch up to him. It took about 10 minutes of just walking to reach the exit while they found various bodies and bloodstains on the floor and wall showing the prisoners that Naruto released began to cause chaos in the base for the hell of it. When Kimamaro asked what would happen should they leave the base, Naruto calmly stated that he had clones stationed outside the base to take out anyone that didn't deserve freedom and ensure they weren't able to make it far. The casualty at which he made that statement disturbed a couple of the girls but they understood that when concerning beings that Orochimaru had locked up instead of the general population meant it was probably best not to let them near populated areas. However, from the looks of the halls, it wasn't looking like too many of the prisoners or the ninja stationed there were going to be leaving for his clones to finish off. As they reached the exit, Naruto stopped when he found a dozen or so inmates and sound ninja fighting on the outside and sighed, I don't have the patience for this. He muttered before sticking his hand out and gold electricity launched out and struck them all making them scream as the electricity coursed through their bodies for a minute before Naruto cut it and they all collapsed to the ground dead. Naruto merely flexed his hand a bit before looking back at the others and made three clones to carry Melona, Karen, and Miram making them blush while Melona sputtered about being able to walk fine and Kimamaro picked up Guren making her blush and smile. Any thoughts of fighting with Naruto were cut short as they quickly started moving with Kimamaro keeping up a bit easier than when they were heading there since his body was recovering the more he actually moved about and Yugo was doing so as well thanks to his unique physiology and abilities. Naruto-sama, if I may, why don't we use the technique you used to get us to rice country before? Kimamaro asked in interest since he had guessed from the usage what it was but didn't want to say so if his new master didn't want it known. Because traveling at that distance when it's your first time using the technique can be dangerous in some forms. Going from wave to rice was alright for you due to your unique bloodline making your body sturdier than most others. The Hyrushin takes a toll on the body unless you specifically train to use it or the user takes the brunt of it to transport others. Why do you think the yellow flash was never using the technique to transport people behind enemy lines to attack? Naruto informed then asked making Kimimaro nod seeing the point. If the Hyrushin took a toll on the user who had trained to use it, then he could only imagine the toll a passenger or passengers would face. Even with his denser bones and trained body, he still felt dizzy and it was hard to stand properly so it wasn't hard to imagine what kind of toll it would take on their new allies. He had little doubt that Yugo would be alright, but Karen and Guren could be anything from nauseous to unconscious while Miriam and Melona could be worse since they were no doubt nowhere near 100% after being locked up in their cells for who knew how long. All in all, his master wasn't taking any chances and it would be best not to question it when Kimamaro had about as much knowledge on the technique as any civilian that had heard rumors of the yellow flash. Five hours later, Wave Country. After jumping and running for five hours towards Wave, Naruto felt it was safe enough to Hiroshin and motion them to come near before he put a hand on Yugo and Kimimaro's shoulders before the group disappeared without a trace and ended up within Wave Country while the girls and Yugo were a little disoriented from the move. Naruto gave them a few minutes to get their bearings before leading them into the town slash budding city and took them straight to Aria, while the girls there immediately took Yugo, Guren, Karen, Melona, and Miram to get checked out while showing no shame in checking out Miram and Melona due to their clothing and Yugo was no better since they thought he was cute. Kimimaro decided to stay with Yugo and Guren to ensure no issues arose which Naruto was fine with since he was going to get some reports and they'd probably leave within a week or so depending on if anyone needed more time to recover. After that, Naruto went to his main contacts in Wave, starting with Tazuna and Inari, and retrieved any information that had been stocked up by the traders that had recently returned since he hadn't checked in with them recently and wanted Wave on alert in case the Akatsuki or Orochimaru decided to pay the area a visit. Once he was done giving the warnings and preparations were done, he made some clones to let everyone know he was back before crashing at Tazuna's spare bedroom and went to sleep knowing that things were only going to get more complicated now. Chapter 7, Back Home Wave Country Naruto awoke the next morning and got up before washing and dressing for the day. Walking through town, he made various stops through the different businesses and locations he purchased, the ones he didn't go to yesterday, to get any relevant information on business progress, room for expansion, new items available, and any other issues or problems that may have arisen since he last checked in. Wave Country was his territory and protectorate thus he was going to ensure it was the greatest it possibly could be. 
Anyone trying to stop, hinder, or disrespect that was an enemy and would be dealt with using the appropriate measures. He'd done it on Earth, why wouldn't he do it on his world especially since he had better evolved people than there? Yes, Naruto had come to theorize and realize that perhaps his people weren't quite as fully human as they liked to call themselves or perhaps were their universes equivalent to a human. This was confirmed on Earth when Naruto had his body scanned and then shown next to different humans. Not only were their bones different densities, their muscles constructed differently, their minds more awake, and their organs different sizes and setups, but his body had three more organs, five more bones, dozens more blood vessels, muscles, tendons, and connective tissues, a brain larger than any known human brain by at least 3%, and a second pupil hidden within the first. Each of these things essentially made him and those like him completely superior to what a normal human was. Naruto had theorized his people were different after Kurama told him about the Sage of Six Paths, the Sage's brother, and the Sage's mother. It was the Sage's mother, Kagaya Atsutsuki that really caught Naruto's interest as she was technically an alien. While this sounds ridiculous at first, Naruto didn't discount it since he had technically hopped dimensions and spoke to beings that were billions of years old or even more. So, aliens didn't seem too far-fetched. His theory was that the Atsutsuki clan very well could have been descendants of the precursors and or the first humans and were able to flee their world before the sun destroyed it the first time. Over the course of who knows how many years, they continued evolving and adapting until Kagaya came to his world and ate from the Shinju, which Naruto theorized was a seed of Eden's original tree. However, this world had changed the properties of it and made it into chakra rather than the various items slash artifacts of Eden that he had collected. Thus, Kagaya was unprepared for the energy coursing through her and attempting to mix with the power she already held from the precursors and first humans. Naturally, such a spontaneous mixing wouldn't be pleasant or lack side effects and the rest is history. This led Naruto to the conclusion that his people were in fact human, they were just more modified slash mutated slash evolved than Earth's version. One case in point was they had electricity, lights, generators, and more technology in a few thousand years that he could track faster than Earth did. Granted some of this was due to Chakra offering new ways to do things and those not able to use Chakra needed ways to keep up somehow, but still, the faster progression was there. Of course, he still needed to scan some people to test if his theory applied to everyone, just specific beings who had lineages easily traced to the Sage and Kagaya, or maybe even just himself and maybe that's why he was chosen by the precursors and why he could drain the powers from the artifacts. Anyway, he shook those thoughts away since there was no point in speculating on something that he could confirm later on. Turning his attention to the brothel, he started walking that way since he needed to check up on the people he rescued. Upon entering, Naruto had to smirk at the sight of the available girls all flirting with Yugo, Kimimaro, Han, Rashi, Chojuro, and Ao, who all were not used to having such female attention upon them, and the same could be said for the women that weren't injured or treated roughly since they were getting some attention too. Included was the group that came with him from Kanoha, easy girls, don't want to overwhelm them with too much affection. Naruto stated getting everyone's attention and causing the girls to giggle as they kept trying to entice the men and a couple of the women. Arya then came up to Naruto, three of the women that you brought back are getting changed and they are well enough to travel if you need them to. Arya stated making Naruto nod and he kissed her cheek, which made her blush and smile before they heard a few doors and saw the women coming down. Conan now wore a sleeveless dark blue leotard-style top that left her pierced belly button exposed, black three-quarters shorts, and dark blue heels. Itomi was dressed in a red tank top with a black jacket, black yoga pants, and a pair of red heels. Lastly, Mei was in a black version of her old dress with red trim and had black heels and stockings on. Naruto looked them over intently making them blush a bit at his intense gaze before he nodded, I apologize if the clothes are not what you had hoped but I've yet to begin moving ninja gear here to be included to my establishments. Naruto stated since he knew that they were more used to kunoichi quality gear and clothing and this wasn't quite there even with the advancements Naruto had added to his area. Seeing the women wave him off, Naruto nodded before he addressed them all, good, then any of you who would like to come with me may do so since we will be leaving within the hour. Naruto stated making them all nod knowing they had to decide if they were going or not and soon. However, before anyone could say anything else, a man ran in panting, Naruto-sama. Trouble at the bridge. A group of bandits are approaching and among them are those men you threw out yesterday. The man stated between pants and huffs as he clearly ran all the way there after Kami knows how long of running around looking for him. Naruto merely nodded, alright, I'll handle it. Naruto stated patting his shoulder as he nodded to Arya and left. 
Conan then looked at the Kanoha Kunoichi near her with a frown, aren't you going to help him? Conan asked inquisitively getting the various brothel girls to giggle while Hannah shook her head. Nah, after what he did in Kanoha, I don't think a group of bandits will be much of a threat to him. Hannah stated making those that didn't leave Kanoha recently frown in confusion. What did he do? May asked while no one but Arya noticed Itomi, Karinai, Anko, Yugo, and Melona had already left to watch Naruto. Let's see, he took down every member of his graduating class and three people that graduated a year before him, took down several foreign ninja, took down Kakashi Hataki, and then killed several chunin and up that tried to kill him all in front of the audience that was attending for the chunin exams and all without taking a hit. Hannah stated making them stare at her in shock. The brothel girls nearly giggled more, why do you keep giggling? Rashi asked in confusion. Naruto-sama has handled this kind of thing before. With no real security here at the beginning, he had to handle attacks and raids like this quite a few times, so there's nothing to worry about. Arya stated with a smile knowing Naruto had handled worse than some mere bandits. Niram then blinked, hey, where did Melona go? She asked making the others realize that a few had left causing Arya to giggle more. They left when Naruto-sama did. I suppose to see how he'll handle the bandits or make sure he'll be all right. Arya stated making them blink before they quickly left to see what would happen. Of course, they ignored the girls pouting and whining when they left while Arya merely laughed. At the bridge. Naruto merely stood there looking on as the bandit group, easily numbering 50 or so, and just stared as the few bridge guards he had fell back upon seeing his arrival. Naruto didn't mind, they were guards with some training not professional warriors even if you didn't need a professional to handle the ragtag band moving towards Naruto. Naruto knew a few had followed him from areas, but didn't care since he had no real reason to. He also knew the others were heading over as well since they no doubt noticed the others' absence. He could also tell that some of them would interfere if they thought he was in trouble, regardless of if he was or not. Turning his thoughts to the bandits coming toward him, he spoke, You are not welcome here, leave and you shall live. Try and enter here, and you will die. Naruto stated calmly making the bandits laugh before one chucked a spear at him. Naruto merely looked at it in disinterest before he caught it when it got near him. He then turned to the stunned bandits and flipped it in his hand before drawing back and hurling it as it flew at incredible speed and pierced through the one who threw it, and the man behind him. Naruto merely looked at the bandits before him impassively, leave or you will die. Naruto stated seriously as he gazed at them from under his hood. However, fools will always be fools as a few of them charged him. Naruto merely sighed and walked forward before he sidestepped one and jabbed his throat, crushing it. As the man fell to his knees trying to breathe, Naruto twisted around another grabbing and snapping their neck as he did so. The last he merely sidestepped and launched a palm thrust to his nose driving it into his brain. Naruto did this in one fluid motion as he never broke stride towards the group, staring at them intently. He didn't care if they charged together or separately, he warned them twice and they wouldn't listen and now they had to pay the price. He couldn't let any go of course, they'd just get a larger band and try again for revenge and this situation would start all over again. Thankfully, it seemed his opponents were both stupid and prideful as they all rushed him at once hoping to overwhelm him with numbers. Naruto sighed as he kept walking, he could have just thrown a bomb at them and ended it but that would have been a waste against such a manageable number and he didn't want to damage the bridge or reveal his poisons yet. With that in mind, he caught one enemy by their wrist and snapped it before taking the sword that dropped. Before the man could try anything, Naruto slit his throat before then parrying another attack and running the attacker through. He then twisted and slashed another across the chest before then stabbing behind him into another attacker right in the chest. He let go of the sword to take a step forward and dodged another attack before grabbing the weapon, a battle axe, from the opponent and slammed the head into their chest before pushing them over lightly. Breaking the shaft, Naruto ducked and swung smashing it against another attacker's head before then lashing out with a mule kick that sent the target flying off the bridge. However, he noticed a few deciding to bypass him and smirked as they were quickly mauled by his wolves making the ones preparing to follow pause, which was when Naruto took advantage of the situation and roared before slamming his hands on the ground causing the ghostly outline of a bear to appear and slam the ground as well. Naturally, the enemies were sent flying with some being flung from the bridge and others slamming into it. Naruto's wolves were quick to finish off any still alive while those in the water would be handled shortly. The sharks of the water were under his control thanks to one of the apples and it combined with his eagle sense let them know who to eat and who to avoid when a person was in the water. 
The bandits were, of course, in the former category, which is why their screams soon echoed out as the waters turned red. Naruto merely dusted his hands and fixed his clothes before turning to one of the guards, who nodded and pressed a button on a communicator in his ear, clean up and scavenge crews to the bridge, Naruto-sama just handled another group of bandits. He stated over his calm getting an affirmative on the other end as the guard nodded to Naruto, who returned the nod and walked off as the guards moved past the carnage, while ensuring there were no survivors, as they returned to their posts. Naruto merely stopped and looked at those gathered seeing their stunned or odd expressions, we leave in an hour, and keep in mind I am not asking any of you to join Kanoha if you wish to come with me. Decide and meet back here by that time or be left behind. Naruto informed before walking off to do his last round of check-ins before he'd leave. The guests of the country merely looked at the carnage and skill he had shown and came to their own decisions with more than a couple deciding to go to see just what he could really do. The group then dispersed to look around wave for an hour. The couple that stayed behind, Anko and Itomi, then got to see a group of a dozen or so people come to the bridge with a large cart. The people then went onto the bridge and began tossing the bodies and pieces over into the water to feed the sharks while the armor and weapons that were still usable in some ways were loaded onto the cart. When they had finished, another group arrived with mops and buckets of water and they promptly started cleaning the bridge letting the bloody water run off into the water below as they did. It went to show that Naruto was dead serious about his claim that he was keeping Wave safe and that he had thoroughly trained the people to deal with different aspects of his defending. If he could do this with a small country of civilians, what could he do with a ninja village or a country like Fire Country? It was honestly terrifying and exciting all in one when imagining the possibilities of such a thing occurring. They'd have to wait and see what he'd do from here on out. Next day. Naruto and his group jumped from tree to tree as they neared Kanoha. None of the people he had saved hadn't joined him, but Naruto wasn't surprised since he could sense they were far too curious not to go with him. Plus, he had saved them so they could at least hear him out on anything he was offering especially since he was offering them sanctuary without wanting them to join Kanoma in return. However, Han and Rasi were more interested in the fact he used to be the container of Kyuubi and apparently Kyuubi was dead. The fact their own biju were scared and respectful of him only heightened their curiosity. Naruto broke from his thoughts as he jumped down to the path to the village and stopped until the others landed behind him. He then unsealed hooded cloaks for the guests and handed each of them one, put these on until you reach my home. I don't want to risk someone recognizing you and spreading the word before I have the chance to inform the Hokage and get things prepared. The civilians here like gossiping too much for their own good and I want to keep your presence in Kanoha contained for as long as I can to get you all adequate protection from the idiots and fools of the village. Naruto stated making them nod seeing his point since if the civilians talked it would be less than a week before everyone heard about them being in Kanoha and that would bring IWA, Kiri, Sound, and possibly aim to their doorstep. However, they also noted Naruto seemed more annoyed at the prospect than fearful or worried and it made them curiouser about the blonde assassin. After everyone donned their cloaks, Naruto led them to the village gate and saw Azumo and Kotetsu there, hey you too. Naruto greeted as he signed the paperwork for his return. Hey Naruto, brought some strays home huh? Izumo asked in a joking tone and Kotetsu merely rolled his eyes at his partner. Naruto, Lady Hokage requested your presence when you returned. Kotetsu stated making Naruto nod before he made a clone and had it lead his guests to his home. Seeing the two guards looking at him, Naruto merely nodded, I'll vouch for them. Naruto stated making them nod since Naruto had the authority to do so given his rank and the guards let him in. Naruto and his Kanoha comrades headed to the office with Fu and To since she would need to fill out the paperwork to transfer to Kanoha, but would ensure she was under Naruto's command or someone he said could be trusted. However, for both groups, they noticed that the civilians scrambled to get out of Naruto's way while some of the more intelligent ones nearly gave him a light bow or nod of respect since they weren't among the idiots of the village. The real Naruto arrived at the tower and entered with his female companions and Shizen sent them in upon seeing them. Entering the office, the group stood there as Tsunade finished looking over a document before she signed it and set it aside and turned towards them, report. Tsunade ordered and Naruto stepped forward. My errand to recruit some promising individuals proved fruitful as I managed to rescue and recruit 13 individuals that will be of help should they choose to help the village. Naruto stated making Tsunade raise her eyebrows. And these individuals are? Tsunade asked with a curious look and Naruto smirked. The former Mizukage, Mei Terumi, her chief guard and hunter Nin Ao, her second guard Jojuro, a seven swordsman of the mist. 
Naruto started surprising Tsunade, next is Kimimaro Kagaya, who was Orochimaru's best soldier. Naruto stated before Tsunade interrupted him, Wait. I thought he was confirmed Kia by Gara and Lee. Tsunade stated and Naruto nodded causing her to frown, then how did? She started to ask before widening her eyes and Naruto nodded. Naruto, D do you not understand what you've done? Tsunade asked and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Yes, though I'm a bit hurt you seem to think I didn't plan for all this. Naruto stated making Tsunade frown, where I went to, wasn't by accident, Shinigami and others entered an agreement with some foreign entities and sent me to where I was. In exchange for my service, I'm allowed certain liberties, one of which being able to bring back certain individuals and Shinigami would let me know if I'm not allowed. Naruto stated surprising the group. I I see. Tsunade stated as she was uncertain how to react to all this. Shall I continue my report? Naruto asked wanting to move away from this conversation right now. At Tsunade's nod, he continued, with Kimimaro, I hit one of Orochimaru's bases and recruited five individuals, one is a commander, one was a lead scientist, and the other three were targets of his experimentation. Naruto stated making Tsunade nod while impressed since the info they could give would be immense. Lastly, I also hit the Akatsuki dash. You what? Tsunade roared in outrage and shock cutting off Naruto causing him to merely blink at her. I hit the Akatsuki base and freed four captives. Naruto stated as Tsunade glared at him in anger, the captives were the two Jinshuriki from IWA and two former members, Konan, who was the right-hand woman of the former leader, and Itomi Uchiha, who had been living under the name Itachi. Naruto stated as Tsunade's face lost all anger and was replaced with shock along with his companions since they didn't know that either. Naruto, you have to turn her him her in. She's a wanted ninja. Tsunade stated and Naruto shook his head before going over to the pictures of the Hokages and removed the picture of his father revealing a safe. Tsunade and the others watched in shock as Naruto opened it easily and flicked through the items before grabbing a file and closing the safe and replacing the picture. He then walked up and placed the file on her desk, the old man and I were close, which is part of the reason I was able to steal the forbidden scroll for that fake graduation test that Mizuki set me up for. Anyway, read this after my report and then you'll understand why I saved her and you can decide what to publicize or not. Naruto stated making her frown as she looked at the file, which had accumulated quite a bit of dust. Anyway, after checking in on some of my sources and allies, I handled a bandit problem and we came here, which brings me to the point that later on I would like you to check over some of my guests. While I am talented at healing, you are more professionally trained rather than combat trained like I was. Naruto stated making Tsunade blink before she sighed. You're really going to have to sit down and explain everything to us sometime. Tsunade stated making Naruto smirk. Everyone? Or just you? Because I'd be happy to take you on a date at some point. Maybe a private picnic where we can talk and get closer. Naruto stated with his smile turning flirtatious making Tsunade blush while his teammates nearly gaped at him. I, that, you. Shut up. Tsunade stated still blushing causing Naruto to chuckle a bit, anyway, the rest of you are dismissed. Fu, here is the paperwork for you to fill out since I have no doubt you'll be waiting outside the office for Naruto since I need to talk to him about something important. I had the papers prepared at Shibuki's asking. Tsunade stated making the women nod before they left with Fu taking her papers and Naruto stood still looking at Tsunade as she leveled her gaze at him, leave us. Tsunade ordered her umbu and waited till she felt their presences leave before sealing the room, Naruto, I'm only going to ask you this once and I want you to answer me honestly. Are you responsible for Himura's death? Tsunade asked and Naruto was silent as he just looked at her. Oh, did Himura die while I was away? Because I am sure the fire daimyo, Lord Mifun, Shibuki-sama, and their host will confirm I was with them the entire way to the capital and then staying there a bit before leaving with my team who was with me for a majority of the time except for my infiltrations. I assure you I was nowhere near Kanoma until the return trip. Naruto stated calmly and Tsunade merely stared at him before sighing, you're cute when you're all serious. Naruto stated with a smile causing Tsunade to straighten with her blush back. When she moved to throw something, Naruto was next to her in an instant and holding her wrist with her large boobs ballooning out against his solid chest and his face mere inches from hers. Tsunade blushed more at the intense gaze he was giving before he moved to her ear, 
I don't care who it is, Tsunade, anyone that threatens you or anyone else precious to me will die and I don't give a damn how many people want to try and fight me on it. I am not saying I killed him Yura, but I have a feeling document will arrive that will show you that he was as much a threat as anyone outside the village. Naruto stated quietly into her ear before leaning back as Tsunade merely gazed at him and he kissed her forehead, I should get home and get my new dependents settled and you should read the file and documents before you then call a council meeting, both to inform everyone of Himura's death and so I can give a full disclosure on what has happened. Naruto stated making Tsunade nod slightly making Naruto smile before he leaned in and kissed her. Tsunade widened her eyes a bit before she closed them and wrapped her free arm around him as she allowed his tongue to dance with hers and then squeaked when she felt his hand begin massaging her ass. She'd normally be pissed at the action, but unlike the assholes and perverts who'd tried it before, Naruto's attempt felt more sensual, loving, almost like he was trying to give her an actual massage with her ass. Plus, the pleasurable sensations going up her spine weren't that bad either. Naruto then pulled back and chuckled slightly at Tsunade's half-glazed eyes, send someone when you've called the meeting. Naruto stated pecking her lips before leaving a still-dazed Tsunade to slip back into her chair as she tried to reboot her brain. Shizen had then come in with Fu's paperwork and blushed a bit at Tsunade's dream-like gaze making her a bit jealous of her teacher. Naruto however was already heading back to his compound with Fu and To while going over his checklist of things to do to both build up his assassin ranks and spread his influence and information network. The first thing would be gaining a foothold in Kanoha's red light district. For all the preaching of being a powerful military village, it had its seedier areas but it was partially necessary both to draw extra clientele and offer the shinobi a stress relief area since no one in the RLD gave a damn who you were, they just cared if you had the money to enjoy yourself. Naruto knew this since his old apartment building was on the edge of the district and luckily wasn't popular enough for people to use it as a love hotel. However, the problem was that no one in the village bothered to have people around to listen and gather any and all information that could prove useful to the village. Such a waste of money, information, and influence was foolish, which is why Naruto planned to take over and use it effectively both for his own allies and for the village. Plus, with some renovations, it would draw even more clientele especially when large events or festivals were held and drew many outsiders to the village. Not to mention the security would make many feel better for spending money as it was less dangerous or risky for them. Of course, Naruto would be ensuring anyone with money was leaving a good-sized chunk of it behind unless he knew the person in question. Then they just had to hope luck was on their side. Then of course there was a secure network to build for information from all over the village and outside to ensure he was informed of anything and everything worthy of note. This wouldn't be hard since he had waived doing so and with the friends and allies he made outside of Kanoma, he could turn at least three countries into hubs to be added to that. It wouldn't be hard to convince Gara, Shibuki, and Koyuki to let him build up his networks in their countries as it wasn't for Kanoha, but for him and the brotherhood he'd build. Naruto would have his brotherhood be impartial unless the threat was too great to ignore just as they were on earth, never taking one country's side over another, one ruler's side over another, unless the Templars controlled the opposite and there was a chance to fight back. Koyuki, who he knew Kami was plucking at her heartstrings to have deeper feelings for him, would agree as not only would it aid him but it would help her own country should disaster strike and aid was needed. Gara and Shibuki would do the same just because it helps give them a better chance at stopping threats and getting help when needed. Next was his recruiting people to turn into his brothers and sisters, but that was easier said than done since in the past people recruited brought nothing but shame and cruelty to the assassin name, though a few rare exceptions were because grief and heartache pushed them too far. Naruto would have to be careful since Chakra made it that much harder to recruit as the ways of the assassins would have to break those who used Chakra of their mindset of using it for everything. Of course, Naruto would also recruit non-chakra users since seeing how effective they were on earth made him realize how effective they could be here. How many times could Ayam and her father have poisoned him with a variety of things in the time he ate there? How many ninja actually kept up their training in detecting and avoiding poisons? Too many and not many were the answers to those questions and Naruto planned to take full advantage of it as there were a variety of ways that could be used to kill someone because they wanted to relax or enjoy something. The waters of a hot spring, the relaxation of a massage, the food they eat, the water or sake they drank, the air they breathed, a medication they ingested, a shot they needed, a plant they smelled, and more as there were so many ways that someone without chakra could kill anyone with chakra if the person in question wasn't vigilant at all times. His time on earth had really opened Naruto's eyes to how much his people depended on chakra and let other skills not relevant to chakra become laxed and rust away. 
Such a thing was detrimental to the village and anyone he wished to recruit, especially Han and Rashi as he didn't want them being stereotypical Jinchuriki and depending on their biju for strength. Their capture by Akatsuki was evidence of what happens when you rely on a biju's power too much over your own power. Christ, the Akatsuki were a band of S-rank ninja targeting biju and Jinchuriki, why the fuck would you depend on the creatures they are hunting? If they are hunting them, then clearly, they must have a plan for fighting and capturing them. Anyway, as for some of his other plans, there was building an elaborate network under the village to hide civilians and evacuate easier, or rather expanding what was there from root. It wouldn't be too difficult as Naruto had routinely used an eagle pulse to get a view of the network beneath the village and knew certain areas wouldn't need to be expanded just repurposed to suit other needs. The training grounds underneath could still be utilized as Naruto never understood why training grounds within a village were left wide open for all to see. It was far too risky and rather foolish to do so and not have some kind of security around the place. During his first Chunin exams, the Sabako siblings could have spied on any number of shinobi training within Kanoha and then given that information to the attacking forces and hurt the village further. There was also the fact Naruto could have spied on any of his fellow competitors to know what they were training in and come up with ways to counter them. Granted Naruto knew it was part of being qualified for Chunin to spy and gather information and then use said information against the enemy, but what about when it wasn't between comrades? What if an enemy learns secrets to different fighting styles, jutsu, or even dojutsu by observing training shinobi or kunoichi without the people knowing? Disaster was the answer, especially since if he knew Niji knew rotation, then his attack strategy for the exams would have been different and Niji would have been in for a ruder awakening than he got. Especially since it also would have shown that Niji knew no elemental ninjutsu at all and such information could save you and kill your enemy easily. It was part of the reason he turned the basement slash subcomplex of his home into a training field as no one would be able to spy on how he trained anyone he recruited or wanted help in training. He didn't need someone trying to steal or usurp his training plans let alone them becoming part of another village without his knowledge, though if someone did, it wouldn't be effective even if they used the Sharingan to mimic the movements. Sasuke had proven that in how quickly he was getting exhausted trying to move like Lee could without the proper endurance and strength training. Naruto broke from his musings and plans as he arrived home and saw Makoto standing outside the gate looking at the house in wonder. Not surprising since the style and such wasn't anything native to the elemental nations. Walking up to her, she turned and smiled at seeing Naruto, Lady Makoto, is this business, social, or personal? Naruto asked having been drilled by various teachers about being respectful to people. When you become associates with kings, queens, barons, cardinals, popes, generals, commanders, princes, princesses, presidents, dukes, and various other influential and politically powerful individuals, better to be respectful until they made it time to not be respectful. It usually not only saved some time, but it also saved you trouble since you could end up with your head on the chopping block, literally, or it could make you have to fight back dozens if not hundreds of soldiers afterwards. Better to avoid the headache regardless of how close he was to someone or what relationship they had with his family. He turned his attention back to the present as Makoto spoke, social. And please, no need to so formal with me, Naruto-kun. Makoto stated with a smile and Naruto nodded a bit. I make no promises, you are still in a position of respect and it wouldn't do for me to not address you properly. Naruto stated making Makoto smile a bit wondering how Kushina would feel about her son being so respectable. Would you care to come in? Naruto asked and Makoto nodded with a smile. Naruto nodded before opening the gate and held it for Fu and Makoto before it clanged shut and the two looked around in wonder at the estate before them. Naruto had made the main house look like the villa in Monterigioni, but the rest was taken after French style estates. It wasn't hard since the compound, which was really the Uzumaki compound but everyone assumed was the Namakase, was large since at one point in time there were a couple hundred Uzumaki clansmen here to help build Kanoha and help keep the peace between the First and Second War. As such, the compound was large and expansive with plenty of room for buildings, relaxation activities, and other items to help not only Naruto but his soon-to-be brotherhood. Naruto also noted to explain why it was called a brotherhood so any women in his life wouldn't get the wrong idea. After all, it was originally formed during a time when women weren't considered fighters and the name was kept because of everyone assuming a brotherhood had no women, so a woman could move unseen without suspicion being raised. After all, who looks for a woman among a brotherhood? The word just immediately puts your mind to be on the watch for males, not females, seeking to end the lives of those they target. 
It was both for helping in assassination, spying, and espionage as well as providing a smokescreen around the female members. The latter was mainly because a woman being interrogated and tortured tended to include rape and other humiliations that no woman should have to endure. While a man could be tortured, rape for them wasn't usually done given the fact that being of that sexual orientation was heavily frowned upon for quite some time and that men had more rights than a woman did for a really fucking long time. However, his world didn't have that problem as much, there were interrogators skilled in handling male or female or both in almost every village. There was still some more hesitation on raping a man than there was a woman since his world was still among the time that in the name of protecting their lord or village, people could do just about anything they wanted. Naruto didn't approve of course, but he did understand it from a point of view. If a target had information that could cause thousands of deaths or stop said deaths, you pushed your morals to the side and used any and all means to get the information and then just tried to live with it afterwards. It was a hard lesson that Naruto learned on earth and something that people of his world that were true professionals understood and had even committed when there was no other option or choice in the matter. Naruto hadn't been the one to rape a woman given his other, unique talents in interrogating people, but he had known at times that others were doing it but he had no authority or chance to take over the interrogation to prevent it. He may be a killer and sadistic bastard to anyone that was his enemy, but he still had his own moral ground to stand on. Naruto shook those thoughts away as he led Fu and Makoto to the main house and found his rescued individuals there talking with Tsunami, Haku, and Eevee. Of course, that led to the tense moment of Makoto and Itomi seeing each other again after so long and the two merely looked at each other. That naturally made things very awkward as Itomi looked at Makoto with relief in her dulled eyes and Makoto looking at Itomi in shock and happiness. Naruto decided to defuse the situation, quickly Eevee, would you show our new guests to where they will be staying? I need to speak to Makoto. Naruto asked and Eevee nodded and stood. Of course, come along everyone. Eevee stated heading for one of the other doors with the others following Eevee, while Tsunami went upstairs to tidy up a bit, and Naruto motioning Makoto to sit, which she did while he went and made some tea before handing her a cup and sat across from her. Where did you find her? Or get her to come back? Makoto asked and Naruto smiled as she took a drink and widened her eyes slightly finding it enjoyable. She was in aim, the leader of the Akatsuki had betrayed her and two others. Itomi tried to stop him, but ended up losing. They had her imprisoned in case the leader had a use for her. To come back was simple, she had no reason to stay away anymore. Naruto stated while giving Makoto a pointed look making her whiten her eyes slightly. You know? Makoto asked and Naruto nodded whole drinking his own tea. Yes, more than you realize, and I plan to help fix some of those mistakes so they no longer haunt what is left of your clan, well, most of what is left of your clan. Naruto stated knowing Abito had to be brought down. How are you going to fix what happened? Mikoto asked in confusion. Naruto merely smiled, you'll find out at the council meeting that Tsunade will be calling as there is quite a lot of things to discuss not only with her and the council, but also with some plans I have that will help not only the village but fix some mistakes too. A lot has happened, Mikoto-san, and I have a lot I need to explain to everyone so they understand one thing and one thing clearly. Naruto stated as he closed his eyes feeling his brothers and sisters in spirit speak to him and giving their praise and acknowledgement for what he was doing. What thing is that? Makoto asked curiously before Naruto looked at her and she gasped, not only was she seeing the hardened edge in his eyes that Minato and Kushina used to have, but she saw the killer, the warrior, the fighter, the veteran, and the leader Naruto was turned into. That I swear allegiance to no country, village, or clan other than my own people, warriors, and students. If I find the people around me wanting, I will crush them. If I find corruption, I will crush it regardless of who it is connected to. If I find a criminal without justifiable explanation, I will kill them regardless of their family or employer. If I find anything that I personally feel should be stopped or destroyed, I will do so when there's not one person in this world that can stop me. I work and serve the world as a whole and will gladly burn this village to the ground if it becomes necessary. Naruto stated seriously wanting to be clear to Makoto that rank, title, wealth, skill, power, everything meant nothing to him, he would crush anyone and everyone that broke any of his code or morals, and no exceptions. He's serious, if Tsunade doesn't stay to his expectations, he'd march right up and end her life himself and damn all the consequences of such an act and then kill and destroy the village until those he deemed worthy were left alive and spared. Makoto thought in shock since such dedication, conviction, and will was rare to find in anyone.
It reminded her of Itomi. The look in his eyes only made her more terrified and impressed as well. Why? Because she honestly thought he could and would make do on his threat and wouldn't bat an eyelash at carrying it out. At present, I have no intention of destroying Kanoha or removing the fire daimyo, but I do plan to clean up the shit in this village and break everyone involved in making it worse before I then spread out further and further until there's no one able to hide from my sight. People of this village will die and it will be my hands or those of my apprentices, the rest of you are just going to have to suck it up and stay out of the way because there's nothing that can be done to stop it from happening. Naruto stated seriously with his tone and voice clearly showing he was deadly serious about this and was going to ensure Kanoha thrived with certain parties removed from the game entirely. Makoto couldn't blame him for that. It didn't take a Hyuga to see the problems springing up in the village all over the place since many were nearly right in the open and no one chose to acknowledge or stop it. They brushed it aside as something that wasn't important right now or that it wasn't their job to handle it or that a ninja should handle it and leave them out of it. Makoto was disgusted by that and tried to make differences where she could, but it was one person against a near entire village. Funny how this spiraled out of control after the Uchiha clan was wiped out and there was no longer a police force to govern and protect the village. One might say it was very, coincidental, as if it was almost planned. Naruto knew it was and hence why he wanted the council meeting because he'd ensure that all of the dirty secrets that were hidden in the village were brought to light and make sure everyone understood that it was because Naruto chose not to tell the fire daimyo that the village was even still standing or had a chance. Oh sure, Nobunaga was told by Naruto that the village had done a lot of seedy and underhanded shit, but Naruto was going to clean it up his way and ensure the ones responsible teetered on the edge of the abyss before he gave them a swift kick into it. He'd ensure Kanoha was every bit the shining example that Nobunaga wanted them and they tried to make themselves out to be and ensure that it was kept quiet so he didn't lose face or reputation in letting such a thing happen under his nose. Nobunaga had accepted and told Naruto he had the full disposal of the capital and anything else he wanted or needed, which Naruto said would be unnecessary since you couldn't get a band of samurai into Kanoha and not have someone notice and go on edge. Better he handles it the assassin and saboteur way than the warrior's way. Plus, Naruto handling it ensured what he wanted to happen was done his way and not someone else's way when they decided they knew better. Besides, Naruto was never one to have someone else fight a battle for him. Naruto turned his attention back to Makoto when said woman spoke, I see. Makoto stated quietly and Naruto snorted. No, you and the others don't, but you will eventually. Naruto stated before rolled his neck. So what did you need, Makoto? Naruto asked getting back to why she was there in the first place. Oh, I wanted to thank you for stopping Sasuke. Had you not done that, I have little doubt I'd no longer have a son. Makoto stated giving Naruto a light head bow of respect. It was no big deal, though I'm sorry that apparently I didn't beat more sense into him. Naruto stated having heard about Sasuke getting a beatdown from Makoto, Jiraiya, and Tsunade before he finally woke the hell up. Makoto gave a small smile, he respects you, you know. Always has even if his pride won't let him admit it. Makoto stated and Naruto nodded. I know. His dope comments morphed from condescending to friendly as we worked on the same team. Sakura was hit or miss, though I recently learned why and can fix it later. Naruto stated having done a lot of looking into the various hostels and questionables with his clones while he was out recruiting and some of the things he found were surprising and he'd have to work on fixing a few things while killing others. Fix it? Please tell me you don't think you did something wrong? Makoto nearly shouted in disbelief and Naruto shook his head. No, it's nothing I did, but it is something I can fix easily enough. Naruto stated making Makoto sigh in relief, but paused as a thought occurred. You're not going to try and convince Sasuke to talk to her, are you? He's tried and the girl just won't listen. Makoto stated since Sasuke had been civil, direct, harsh, and just about every method you could think of to flat out tell someone you weren't interested in a relationship and the girl still kept trying to ask him out. Kami, Sasuke had sent her to the hospital more than once when she opened her mouth and insulted some people, namely Naruto, around Sasuke. No, it has nothing to do with Sasuke at all. Naruto stated making Makoto nod, glad her son wouldn't have to try and explain things to the girl, again. It was becoming like some high-priced cartoon where the animators wanted some kind of repeated comedy to occur, only it wasn't the least bit funny and was now getting old really fast. Karmic slash ironic justice? Sure, since Sakura was getting the same treatment that she gave Naruto, but it wasn't quite funny. Thank Kami for that at least. 
Makoto stated since Sakura was honestly going to make her son go crazy all over again with how she was acting. Naruto merely nodded before he stood, I apologize that we can't keep talking, Makoto, but I need to see to my new guests getting settled in and preparing some documents for the council meeting that will be called. Naruto stated making Makoto nod and finish her tea before standing. I understand, Naruto Kuwan. Makoto stated with a smile as Naruto walked her out. It was nice to see you again, Makoto. Naruto stated as he casually walked her to the gate. Yes, hopefully next time we can simply talk, though I will demand some more of that tea you made. Makoto stated with a smile and Naruto nodded. No problem. And please, be patient with getting to speak to Atomi since she's still coming to grips with being back home and I'm sure what she did is still haunting her. I'll be helping her through this as well as working with her since the meeting will reveal and shed light on some things. Naruto stated knowing Itomi never thought she'd be back in Kanoha alive let alone not in chains or shackles. I understand, please give her my best and know that I'm still proud of her. Makoto stated knowing that killing their clan was the hardest thing for Itomi to do next to using her mangekyo on Sasuke. Makoto saw the reason behind it later on. Itomi wanted Sasuke to use the trauma and pain to unlock his own mangekyo when he unlocked the Sharingan. Only, Sasuke only let the pain and sorrow fuel his anger instead of channeling it into making himself better. While rage could help you fight better, it could also weaken you as you are so enraged that you can't think clearly and fight properly. Makoto knew this because she knew her children and no doubt Itomi wanted Sasuke to kill her later on to remove the stain of the betrayal and become a hero to rebuild the clan again. It didn't help that Itomi was no doubt feeling horrible about the clan being destroyed when it wasn't fully necessary. No doubt having Sasuke kill her was a way for her own honor to get restored with her accepting her judgment for kinslaying when she reached the afterlife. Will do. Naruto stated and Makoto broke from her thoughts and nodded at him. You know, I'd like to get dinner some time and thoroughly catch up. Makoto stated with a small smile and not looking at him anymore. Naruto merely smiled in amusement, are you asking me on a date, Makoto? Naruto asked letting Makoto get a bit of pink to her face. Maybe, is that a problem? Makoto asked and Naruto chuckled. I don't know, we'll see how you feel about it after the council meeting and some other things. Personally, I have no problem with it. Naruto stated with a smile making Makoto smile in return. Great. Makoto chirped with a smile before she began walking away with her hips swaying and Naruto chuckled before he closed the gate and began heading towards the second house. As he did, he let his mind wander to a few of the times he'd brought home astray, as some of his students and siblings called it. Flashback, 1716, Tulum. Naruto stood aboard the jackdaw in a mix of modern clothing and assassin robes, sail to this cove here, just watch it since the waters become shallow. Naruto warned as Edward Kenway was steering the ship with Adiwale looking at the man in curiosity. Just what the bloody hell do you and kid want me to be here for? Edward asked since his two friends were being mysterious and suspicious about this. He'd known Naruto since his privateer days and the man, strange as he was, had never steered him wrong. If you can't figure it out based on the obvious, then you don't deserve to be told the answer. Naruto stated while flexing his hidden blade to prove a point. What? Those robed monks I've had to fight and kill at times? Edward asked incredulously since they had nothing he wanted. Those robed monks as you call them are skilled and brave men who fight to help humanity as a whole rather than saving their own skin. Naruto stated and Edward scoffed. If that were true, mate, then slavery would have ended already. Edward stated only for Naruto to glare at him. Scattered groups against multiple nations? Yeah, that sounds like a fight that can be won quickly. Besides, not like I've seen you stopping any slave transports. Naruto stated as he jumped off the ship with Edward wincing and following him shortly after. Low blow, mate, but fair point all the same. Edward stated since he knew freeing slaves brought more trouble than raiding gold and supply ships. Regardless, stay with me and do as I say and you won't be harmed here. Naruto stated as they started walking inland. Exactly why would I want to be here or possibly join this club of yours? Edward asked while looking around with his hood up. Well, for one, you'd have an army of professional assassins on your side rather than wanting your head on a pike. Two, you'd have allies willing to hide you and help you lay low when you need it. Three, the assassins would be willing to help NASA more than we have in the past since we could build another base and operate there. 
4. You'd have access to our information network which would not only help you find enemies, but also find treasure ships and help you keep an eye on your wife. Naruto stated making Edward freeze a bit at the mention of his wife. I haven't seen Caroline since I left. I made a deal with her father that I wouldn't return until I made my fortune. Edward stated not really caring to mention that his own father disowned him for bringing trouble on their home. I know, I was hunting down Wilson at the time and killed him shortly after he placed you on the emperor. I also kept some agents watching your wife and parents in case your father-in-law tried any more underhanded tactics. Naruto stated making Edward look at him. Do you think you could get a letter to my wife? Let me fully explain things and get a response from her? Edward asked and Naruto nodded. Yes, but you know, nothing in this life is free. Fortunately, the price I want is rather small. Naruto stated as they stopped in a clearing. And that is? Edward asked while wondering if he just walked into a trap. Get from here, to an Aztec temple further inland without being seen by the different assassins between here and there. You do that, you'll have my attention and I will send the letter and ensure it winds up in your wife's hands. You fail, you'll have to earn the delivery some other way that I deem fitting. Naruto stated and Edward frowned but nodded since it seemed straightforward enough. All right, mate, you got yourself a deal. Edward stated shaking Naruto's hand before he headed further into the jungle and Naruto smiled. Don't hold it against him, to buy, he knew nothing of the assassins or templars beyond someone from the assassins tried to kill him. Naruto stated when Edward was out of earshot and Mary Reed aka James Kidd and mentor Atabai came from the brush. He sold us out to the templars, we should finish him. Atabai stated angrily and Naruto looked at him with a disapproving glare. And how many people have we sold out to others because we had no reason to side with those we sold out? Naruto questioned and Atabai was silent since he couldn't refute the Grand Mentor's words. He also has the sense, it's more advanced than others I've seen. He can see people through objects and even mark them for when he's not using the sense. Mary stated knowing that no one had improved the sense to that kind of degree, Ezio Auditore had come close, but nothing like that. I, he's a natural-born assassin, he's just got other priorities. Naruto stated making Tobai scoff. You mean his need for gold and status. Tobai stated while Mary had to nod since Edward was like that. And you're both idiots for not looking beneath the underneath. Naruto stated since for all their skill, they still took too much for face value. What are we not seeing, mentor? Mary asked wondering if there was actually more to Edward than he let on. He made an arrangement with his father-in-law, Edward would not return to his wife or England until he had obtained his fortune, if he did return before that, then his father-in-law could annul the marriage between them. Edward strives for gold because he can't see his wife again until he has enough of it. Naruto stated surprising the two since they thought he was another money is everything type man. I see. Tobai stated and Naruto merely glanced at him. Because someone else opened your eyes. Naruto stated making Tobai flinch since he knew that was a shot aimed at Tobai's hostility towards Edward. Let's see how my new recruit does, shall we? Naruto asked as he jumped into the trees and began jumped along to catch up to Edward with the other two assassins following him. Time skip, 1738, Massachusetts area. Come along Liam, you can't fall behind too much or you'll get lost. Naruto called to a young Liam O'Brien as said young man followed him. I'm trying sir. I've never been outside of New York before besides on a ship. Liam stated as he moved to keep up with Naruto, who was dressed in robes mixed with the colonial clothing. I know, but if you keep up and prove me right in what I think about you, you'll be able to see a lot more. Naruto stated with a kind smile as he led Liam to the Davenport homestead where Achilles was waiting for him. Thank you again for saving my father, sir. He would have been executed by that bastard at the shipyard if you hadn't intervened. Liam stated knowing he was with this man now because his father wanted him to learn something new and branch out to become a better man than he was. It was no trouble. The man was a greedy bastard that needed to be put in his place and shown to all that your employees have to grow with you or things go wrong. Naruto stated knowing he had quite literally beat the man senseless and then made him sign the ship and dock over to him and Naruto began turning it around. The Templars wouldn't touch it, they were too scared of him at this point to actively bring his wrath down. I still don't like that I had to take a man's life. Liam stated and Naruto patted his shoulder. 
I know, but here, you can be almost certain that the people that die are those that deserve it because of the things they've done and will do to people. Naruto stated while not promising the young man that it would be a guarantee that people that died deserved it since there wasn't always a black and white line to follow. Ezio killing an innocent man in Constantinople was proof enough. I understand, sir, but I won't commit to anything if I'm not sure. Liam stated wanting to be respectful but clear he wasn't going to do anything he didn't feel he should. Then you're already smarter than people twice your age. Naruto stated making Liam smile as Naruto led him to Achilles. Time skip. 1746. Naruto smiled in amusement while in New York as the young woman before him tried to steal his money by pickpocketing, only for Naruto to smack her hand away and keep walking. Then she tried again, and again, and again, and still again. Each time, Naruto foiled her attempts and it was clear she was not happy at being caught so many times and apparently so easily. Can I help you? Naruto asked in amusement as he saw the teen girl glaring at him with a somewhat childish pout on her face. How? She asked and Naruto merely raised an eyebrow making her growl, how did you know I was pickpocketing you? The girl growled out and Naruto merely chuckled. You're good for your age, but you're nowhere near skilled enough to swipe anything from me. Still, you're impressive to have the skill down as well as you do for one so young, but you're still a long way from being a master at it. Naruto stated with his smile still in place. The girl scowled and was about to accuse him of not knowing anything about pickpocketing before Naruto tossed her a small purse. She frowned until she saw it was in fact her change purse and she looked at Naruto in shock as he kept smiling. Just as Naruto was about to turn and walk away, the girl spoke, wait. She shouted stopping him as he turned to look at her with a raised eyebrow, can you teach me? To be a better pickpocket? She asked and Naruto chuckled. I can probably do that, and teach you a lot more with the help of an associate of mine. It really depends on just how willing you are to learn. Naruto stated looking at the girl and seeing the fire in her eyes, both for revenge and to become better. I can do it. Give me a chance and I'll prove I can keep up if not surpass anyone else. She declared boldly and Naruto smirked. All right, it's going to involve leaving New York for now, is that all right? Naruto asked and the girl looked hesitant before she nodded resolutely, good, what's your name kid? Naruto asked and the girl smiled, Hope. Hope Jensen. The now named Hope stated making Naruto nod before he motioned Hop to follow him since she'd need to be trained at the homestead to become a full-fledged assassin. Time skip, 1748. Naruto and Liam were walking through New York looking for an old friend of Liam's as Naruto had gotten word about the young man losing his parents and was now on his own trying to survive. Liam thought he'd be a great addition to the order since Shay was always ready for a fight and always made sure anyone not involved in the fight was kept out of it. Achilles tried to dissuade such a thing, but Naruto overruled him since Shay sounded capable and able to be trained into a fine young man. I don't understand why Achilles was so against me adding Shay to the Brotherhood. Liam commented as they walked through New York. He's afraid the Brotherhood is growing too fast and he will fail as mentor, which would be seen as a failure by his teachers. His own pride is getting in the way of building it correctly and carefully building the Brotherhood with Abigail not having much success in breaking him of that. I fear he may have been made mentor too quickly. Naruto stated as he kept an eye out for Shay or anyone else of interest. But he has built the Brotherhood and has been successful in gaining people from all over the colonies. Liam argued and Naruto shook his head. Doesn't matter. He's more concerned with trying to get people from every empire or kingdom rather than just recruiting people that will dutifully serve the cause. The fact that you and Hope were recruited by me and were refined by me further shows that Achilles isn't being as good a mentor as he should be. Ezio, Tobai, Altair, and several others I knew trained assassins to be good in all areas while letting them excel in the area they were best at. Achilles wants everyone to be great at all aspects because it reflects even better on him, which won't work. Some of you are better at stealth, some are better with firearms, some are better in close combat, some are better at sailing, some at climbing, and so on and so forth. However, each of you could be brought down by an enemy that is like me and can excel in all the areas when push comes to shove. You're a skilled assassin, Liam, there's no doubt about that, but you're not invincible and could easily be surpassed by a recruit that has raw talent for the arts and a drive to become even stronger. Naruto stated with Liam frowning in thought while Naruto recalled Sasuke's fight against Lee just before the first test of the Chunin exams. 
Sasuke was the skilled fighter that no one thought could be brought down so easily, but Lee was a natural-born talent for taijutsu and his natural drive to become stronger made him deadly and near unstoppable. If Lee had more stamina or had initiated the fifth gate against Gara, Gara would have lost and quite possibly more than just the match. Naruto broke from his thoughts as he and Liam heard fighting going on and rushed down an alleyway and came upon an interesting sight. A scruffy young man was fighting a gang of thugs and was clearly winning as he was still standing while four or five of them were on the ground, knocked out or in pain. Naruto stopped Liam from interfering as he wanted to see what the man could do and wasn't disappointed as he fought like a warrior mixed with a brawler. He'd had a loose stance but was ready for each attack without really having a style to use, but still effective nonetheless. He further proved his skill when the thugs drew knives and he quickly disarmed a few and incapacitated others before he had to kill one of them leaving the others to decide to run. The man panted a minute before catching his breath and turned at the sound of clapping to see two hooded and armed figures looking at him, impressively done. Naruto stated while Liam removed his hood making the man whiten his eyes. Liam? Is that you mate? The man asked and Liam smiled before he was engulfed in a hug. Liam grunted and laughed, Shay, Jesus you've gotten strong. Liam stated before the now named Shay put him down. Well, I couldn't be scrawny forever, not with all the local gangs wanting to try and push their weight around. Shay stated with a smile to his friend before looking at Naruto, and who is this? Shay asked and Liam motioned to Naruto. This Naruto Uzumaki, a teacher for me and some others. Liam stated with Shay and Naruto shaking hands, listen Shay, we're here because we heard about your father and Naruto thought you'd make a good addition to our brotherhood. Liam stated and Shay raised an eyebrow. We work as a unit to bring down our enemies and keep them from targeting the innocent people and those who could get in the crossfire. Myself and another train recruits to hunt, track, fight, kill, steal, pickpocket, gather information, and other necessities to ensure we can stay in the shadows and help those who live in the light. Naruto stated with Shay frowning in thought. Say I did join, what's to stop me from wanting to leave after I've learned everything from you? Shay asked since depending on the people of this brotherhood he may not want to stick around, even if Liam was one of the members. Nothing at all, if you want to leave then you can, but if you use the skills we give you against the innocent people, then I will have to hunt you down. Naruto stated while giving Shay a look that said he was serious. Well, lucky me then that I don't like the idea of people getting caught in a fight they have no business being in. Shay stated with a grin and Naruto snorted. Come on, if you want learn then New York isn't the most efficient place for everything. Liam stated as they headed for the Davenport homestead. Flashback end. Naruto shook those memories away since some of them led to sad memories or disappointment. Edward went on to be a master assassin and mentor with his wife and kids, though from what Naruto understood he gained a second wife after returning to England. Caroline even approving it apparently though public appearances had her as a handmaiden first Caroline. Though Edward knew they could do whatever they wanted since most ostracized him as it was for being a pirate. Liam was a devoted assassin but he was too blinded by his loyalty and dedication to Achilles and it nearly costed Liam his life. Naruto had helped Shade beat sense into him, but Liam left the brotherhood afterwards. Hope was too ambitious and faltered in the rule of the creed to not harm innocence and was ashamed of herself following different incidents. She left the Brotherhood too but didn't cut contact with Shay or Naruto. And Shay, heh, Shay was by far one of his greatest students, easily on par with Ezio. When he heard from Shay what happened in Lisbon, Naruto was understandably pissed, but it was aimed at Achilles and at Iwale. Their duty was to keep the items away from the Templars, not seek them out to possess. Needless to say, Shay had Naruto's support when he saw how far Achilles had brought down the Brotherhood with his ambitions and actions. He was just glad it was Monroe and Haytham that found Shay before Naruto did and not someone else that could have made things much worse. Monroe and Haytham at least knew not to touch the sites contained in the book after the problems in Haiti and Lisbon causing untold destruction and death. Heaven forbid what would have happened to the world if they went to the other five sites contained in the book before Naruto destroyed it. Naruto shook those thoughts away before entering the house seeing the living area was empty, which was no doubt due to the others getting their rooms and situating themselves in their chosen rooms. Naruto merely went to a wall and pressed a button causing a green light to come on in the living area and knew each of the rooms were now lit up with a light telling everyone to come to the living area. Naruto waited a few minutes before Haku and Ibi came to the living area before the others all started funneling in as well. Nodding, Naruto pushed the button again to turn off the light and turned to address them, 
I trust the rooms are acceptable to you all? Naruto asked getting various nods. Good, now if you will come with me, I will give you the tour of the plantation, estate, compound, or whatever it is that you wish to call it. Naruto stated before motioning them to follow him. Holding the door for all of them, Naruto closed it once the last was out. What exactly is it that you want from us? Rashi asked since it was a question on all of their minds. He did wince a bit from the glares given by Haku and Evie and he realized that was a bit rude and blunt. Naruto however, nearly waved him off, as I said, I don't want anything from you. If you wish to join Kanoha, then do so. If you wish to join me in the group I will be building, then do so. If you wish to simply stay here and rest where it is safe and maybe get stronger, then do so. If you want to leave, then go right ahead but I don't know why you bothered coming here if you were just going to leave immediately. Naruto stated before showing them all over the compound. The first place was a large garden and plant area at the back of the main house, this is my urban plant garden, but I'd not touch or sniff anything that catches your eye that you can't identify, it might be one of the poisonous plants and I'd hate to have to rush you to the hospital. Naruto stated since some of the girls were fascinated by some of the prettier plants, especially the ones that couldn't be found in the elemental countries, they are that deadly? Itomi asked and Naruto nodded. How come we aren't getting affected by the scent ones right now? Han asked and Naruto smiled. The plants in question react only when something gets close to them, they have hypersensitive hairs that let them know when something is within a certain range. You enter that range and they expels the spores and pollen right at you. If it's your face, then you'd be dead before you realize the mistake if I wasn't here. Naruto stated making them all cluster more to the path Naruto had created through. Once you're around long enough, you'll be fine. I hybridized these plants with another that lets them remember what is familiar to them, hence why I don't get sprayed when I get near them. Naruto stated knowing it would ease their worries a bit. And those? May asked pointing to an isolated patch of pitch black flowers with a pink core that didn't look dead. Those? Those none of you touch, ever. Anyone other than me will not have a pleasant experience with them. Just trust me, even if you're a Jinshuriki, don't get close or try to touch them. Naruto warned wanting to be clear and the other frowned wondering what was up with those plants. Han, Fu, and Rashi also felt their biju telling them to stay away from the plants. They weren't natural and were much deadlier than they appeared. If the biju were worried about the plants, then they would be too and just keeping their distance. And why is there such a large clearing there? Miram asked pouting to a large rectangular clearing. Naruto merely glanced over at it, ah, that's for something in the future. Still working out some details about what I want to do. Naruto stated since it was the truth. Naruto then lead them to a large pool and a private hot spring that was walled off and divided, this is for relaxation, naturally, and the hot spring is laced with seals to ensure no one can peep or try to spy on the other side of the walls. Naruto stated making them nod before he led them to a large training area, this area is mainly for jutsu and for training that needs a lot of room or be outdoors to do so. Naruto stated as he kept leading them around. He then came to some of the extra buildings scattered throughout, these are mainly for if any of you find that special someone and want your own space or if anyone joins my clan as a branch or servant member. Naruto stated making a few raise their eyebrows. Servant? Chojuro asked with suspicion and Naruto chuckled. My clan was known for taking in strays from all over the place. Those that had fighting ability were put in the branch house to help protect the Uzumaki clan and their ways. Those that didn't have any combat ability but still wanted to become part of the clan for protection and a home were placed in the servant house where they take up positions of maids, butlers, gardeners, hunters gathers or any profession they had a skill in. If they married one of the Uzumaki then they were added to the main family, but they still had to contribute to the clan in some way except for if the women were pregnant. It was part of the reason my clan was so large and feared because we had skilled people from all different countries and walks of life to contribute to our home and make the clan stronger. Naruto explained wanting to be clear that they didn't enslave anyone and he wasn't making them be servants. The others merely nodded while filing that bit of history away for later as Naruto continued the tour. Naruto then brought them to the main house and allowed them inside, this is the clan head slash leader house of the compound. Has all the basic necessities in several bedrooms, office space, basement, attic, and some other additions I created. Naruto stated before leading them to a doorway under the stairs and started walking down. 
Reaching the bottom of the stairs, the group saw three doors at the front and two sides with the one on the left having a large seal over it keeping it locked and secured. What's in there? Melona asked curiously and Naruto merely looked at the door. Something for later on. Naruto stated cryptically before he opened the front door and walked in and the others did too causing them to widen their eyes in shock and surprise with some even gasping. Before them was a huge chamber with different training dummies throughout the center. Along the walls were shelves and shelves of books, scrolls, and other readable items that reached the 40-foot-tall ceiling. There were also desks, chairs, and lamps near the walls but not in the center area, which was depressed further into the ground than the surrounding edges. Also along the walls were a few doors with a large set of double doors on the far end wall. In front of the door, they came in, was a podium with an Assassin Brotherhood symbol emblazoned on it. This is the training ground where you can practice various taijutsu, weapon, and assassination arts. The walls are lined with information and knowledge for you to explore and find as you please. You can either browse the items or use the podium there to brings up an index for a specific subject and sub-subjects. The door on the left leads to an even larger cavern that is a more advanced training area that can be tailored to what you need slash want to train in regardless of what it is. The door on the right is where ceremonies will be held if any of you decide to join what I will build here. Naruto stated walking down with the others still looking around in awe, including Haku and Evie since they hadn't been down here yet. This is impressive. Kimimaro stated as it was grander than anything Orochimaru had. Naruto chuckled, just wait. Naruto stated as he walked to the double doors and Haku and Ibi followed him with the others, quickly doing the same. Reaching the doors, Naruto opened them and stepped in making them all widen their eyes as there were walls, racks, stands, displays, holders, and fuller of weapons, staves to swords to axes to knives to heavy weapons to polearms to daggers to bows to crossbows to lances to clubs to maces to shields to just about everything you could think of. If there was a close-range weapon created on earth, Naruto had at least one in this room along with every type of bow and crossbow. When you're ready to start training, pick up any weapon here that you please and train with it and don't worry if it breaks or gets damaged, just put the pieces back into their place and the seals here will repair and fix them. Naruto stated with many looking around the room and all with Chajuro looking intently at the different swords. Amazing! May whispered seeing the different weapons that ranged from cruel to elegant looking in their design and shape. Yeah, took a long time to get all of these. Naruto stated before he headed back towards the doors, come on, only got one more stop to do and then you'll be free to explore to your heart's content. Naruto stated with some amusement, making them all start following him with Ibi and Haku closing the doors after everyone was out. Naruto then led them back to the entrance and this time took the door that was on the right when they first came down the stairs. Said door led to another flight of stairs and Naruto went up them and opened the door revealing them to be in the guest house with the door being under the stairs like it was in the main house. The others all blinked as they were brought out of the stairwell and Naruto then closed the door. However, when he did, they all watched the door fade away leaving just a wall with a small assassin brotherhood symbol emblazoned on it. When you want to head down there, just place your hand against the symbol and the door will appear due to you being marked by the seal after I brought you down there. The stairwell is set to be connected to every building on the property so no matter which building you're in, you can head down. That area is mainly to help ensure any training done is kept secret and there are seals in place to ensure no practicing where sparring can spill into the sitting areas and no weapons can fly into that area. Naruto explained making them all nod, with that, the tour is completed and you are free to relax, eat, drink, or train as you please. You'll be able to leave the compound after the council meeting Tsunade will eventually call and I can explain things in detail to them. Naruto stated making them all nod. Good, I'll have Haku or Evie here retrieve you all when dinner is ready. Naruto stated before he left the house with everyone looking at each other before most of them went downstairs again. They wanted to fully explore their new home. Next morning. Naruto awoke in his bed to the sound of someone knocking on his front door having used seals to ensure the knock could be heard in the house's entirety. Getting up and popping his joints, Naruto untangled himself from Tsunami's embrace and went downstairs. Arriving, Naruto answered the door to see Yuga there in full umbu attire, Cat, what can I do for you today? Naruto asked looking at her intently and she fought back the shudder that wanted to go down her spine. Lady Hokage wishes for you to attend a council meeting that is to be held in 10 minutes. Yugo stated making Naruto nod. Very well, I'll be there. 
Naruto stated making Yuga nod in acceptance before she shunshined away and Naruto went to his room to change. Time to shake the trees and get the vile leeches and termites out of them, then I can start plucking all the weeds, trim the branches, and separate the wheat from the chaff. Naruto thought to himself knowing the council meeting about to be held would shake the village to its core and open the way for him to expand and handle the various threats and issues of this world. Going to a side wall, Naruto pressed his hand against it causing a seal to light up, Itomi, Haku, Ivi, Kimimaro, please get dressed including a cloak and meet me at the gate in a few minutes. I need you all for a council meeting that is to be held shortly. Naruto stated using his seal version of an intercom system before going up to his room to get dressed. Once he was fully dressed and armed, Naruto left his home and found his requested people, no harm is going to come to any of you, so please relax and just follow me. Naruto stated and they nodded before he opened the gate and began walking to the tower with Naruto fully intent on starting the new dawn of the village hidden in the leaves, even if he had to do it one corpse at a time. Chapter 8, Raising Souls Okage Tower, Council Meeting Room Tsunade and everyone, counting the heirs to the clans, sat in a mostly comfortable silence as they waited for Naruto to arrive which also included Asuma as he was acting clan head for the Saratobi clan until Kanoamaru was old enough or even wanted the seat. Of course, the shinobi were also a bit cautious of Danzo seeming to be, happy? And none of the usual cold aura he kept up was present at all. The fact that Himura was missing only further confused and made them cautious. They then turned towards the door as it opened and Naruto walked in, but they were also surprised, none more so than Sasuke, at the sight of his companions, who had removed their hoods upon coming in. Naruto merely walked forward before standing there a moment. I believe we should start, Hokage-sama. Naruto stated making her nod. Before we get to Naruto and those that just entered with him, there is the matter of Himura's absence. The reason for said absence is because Himura passed away in his sleep two days ago. Swanda stated surprising everyone except Naruto and Danzo. However, it doesn't matter much since I would have ordered his death after different documents and files were delivered to my office earlier. Swanda stated before an umbu placed copies at each clan head and advisor while specifically not giving any to the civilians. Hokage-sama, why were we not given a file? Mabuki Haruno asked in general confusion while noting her fellow civilian council members were getting nervous while the clan heads were showing signs of intense rage and disgust. Because your fellow council members are corrupt as shit, Mabuki-san. Naruto stated making the other civilians glare and pale. They've been working with Himura to bring in more money for them and turn Kanoha into what they want it to be. I also have documentation of them attempting to sell different corpses of clan members to Orochimaru and other entities along with Jutsu from the Kanoha archives. Naruto stated before Umbu moved at Tsunade's signal and detained the other civilians while Mabuki merely shook her head at the idiots. However, Naruto wasn't done driving the knife into them, there's also the matter of the Uchiha massacre to bring up for them too. Naruto stated making them look at him, they were plotting with the few elders and assholes of the clan to perform a coup in exchange for the various members of their families to marry into the Uchiha clan. Naruto stated surprising everyone, coup? Sasuke asked in confusion and Naruto nodded. Yes, the elders of your clan, besides your grandfather, and others of your clan were planning to pull a coup on the Hokage and take over the village. Naruto stated shocking everyone, with some being that he knew about it. Then. Itachi. Sasuke stated trying to fully comprehend. Yes, Itachi, or rather Itomi as she's really known, killed the clan because she was protecting the village. However, the civilians didn't want a survivor that could sell them out, so they worked with Himura to wipe the clan out entirely. He cornered Itomi and gave her the ultimatum of killing a majority of the clan and leave the village to never return or stay and have the entire clan killed for being traitors. Itomi killed those responsible in the clan and those that were going to die soon anyway, plus a few that attacked her because they thought she'd turn traitor to the village and clan and wasn't able to reason with them. While she did that, Himura had his own personal ninja enter and kill others along with another Uchiha that is a threat to everyone, killing others to harvest the eyes and ensure no one would be able to challenge him should he decide to attack the village. Naruto stated making Sasuke and Makoto blare at the struggling civilians. Naruto took a breath as Tsum then asked, why was Itomi pretending to be a man? Sum asked and Naruto snorted. Power-hungry assholes trying to either replace Fugaku or get into the clan. 
Itomi was a prodigy and it wasn't a stretch to say she could be Hokage when old enough, with that power and prestige available to a female, it would make the people come out of the woodwork to take her one way or another and the elders would only support it to ensure she stayed submissive and loyal to their way of running the clan. Naruto stated having been given a lot of insight to things while away. Naruto then turned to Tswanda, I assume they're to be executed, correct? Naruto asked making her nod. Then I'll just do it now. Naruto stated while sticking his hand out towards them and yellow lightning launched out and struck them each in the forehead making them scream and howl in pain as the Yumbu quickly stepped back. Everyone then watched as the civilians all seemed to be having seizures and were foaming at the mouth as the electricity continued. Naruto then cut it off a minute later and the now burned husks of the civilians dropped to the ground as Naruto flicked his fingers. Naruto then unsealed a stack of papers and tossed it onto the table in front of Tsunade, a detailed list and evidence of everything they've done since they took the seats and those they corroborated with. Naruto stated since she probably wanted them to be interrogated first. Swanda looked at the stack and nodded before looking to him, thank you, now I believe you were going to explain where you disappeared to and some of things that have obviously changed. Swanda stated making Naruto nod before he summoned a chair from a seal and sat while a pair of clones took chairs for those that came with him. Naruto unsealed a pipe and took a long drag of it before breathing. Well, to cut straight to the point, I was taken to a different world. Naruto stated making many raise their eyebrows. Different world? Shibi Aburane asked and Naruto nodded. Yes, I was taken by two beings that apparently needed help with their world as it was in for a massive shitstorm and they needed someone that could operate outside the boundaries of their realm. Thus they asked Kami's court for help and I was picked. Naruto stated with a sigh as he took another drag of his pipe. Why you? Hayashi asked and Naruto snorted and pointed to Jiraiya. Ask Jiraiya, the guy was told about me from the Toad Elder. Naruto stated making Jiraiya widen his eyes in shock at what Naruto was referring to. You know? Jiraiya asked and Naruto nodded. Years and years of spending time with the toads and the fact the original has been altered made it so they told me. Naruto stated making Jiraiya nod. Can you please explain what you're talking about? Tsunade asked and Naruto shrugged. The Toad Elder was told a prophecy that someone Jiraiya would teach would become an important figure in the ninja world and would have the power to revolutionize or destroy it. However, my being called away forced the prophecy to be altered to something else. Naruto stated making many raise their eyebrows in surprise. And what is it now? Choza Akamichi asked and Naruto shrugged. Don't know and don't care. Mortals aren't meant to know what the gods have planned since then anyone disagreeing with what could happen would try to alter it to benefit them. As such, I made it clear to the Toad Elder that I didn't want to know nor should I know any plans the gods had for me and he shouldn't tell anyone else or he could incur their wrath for blabbing. Naruto stated making many nods. So, you were called to another world for only five years? Doesn't seem like their threat was as big as they thought it was. Hana Inazuka asked and Naruto shook his head. No, I was gone far longer than five years. Naruto stated as he took another puff of smoke. Each world has a different time field, meaning some worlds pass time slower or faster than other worlds. Due to the time in that world, I'm now the oldest mortal alive in this world. Naruto stated making many raise their eyebrows. But, you don't look a day older than 18. Ino shouted and Naruto shrugged. Uzumaki genes combined with some other powers and the revitalizing power of Kyuubi's chakra being in my system essentially frees me at this age. It could be a very long time before I ever age any further unless I made myself age. Naruto stated surprising them all. So, how old are you? Swanda asked remembering him stating that she was the kid in their relationship if she wanted to stay with him. Naruto was silent a moment knowing his answer was going to set them off. 951, Naruto stated making everyone freeze and look at him in shock. Say what? Kiba and Hana Inazuka yelled since both were there until it was decided who would be the next clan head. The year I entered that world was 1179 and when I left it was 2037. However, that's not counting 80 years I spent on a side trip I took at one point at the behest of the beings that called me away. Naruto stated as if he was talking about the weather. It's why I said no one that fought me was a problem since I trained every day for those 938 years as well as gaining new powers from various objects that the two beings that called me away created with other members of their race. 
They didn't want humans using the objects anymore, so they made it so I could drain the power away from them. Naruto stated as he took another puff of his pipe. Do these powers include raising the dead? Sasuke asked making many glances at him in confusion. Haku and Kimamaro were killed during different missions, yet they're standing right there as if nothing happened to them. Sasuke stated and Naruto shocked them all by nodding again. Yes, though if Shinigami says no then I can't bring the person or persons back no matter what. Naruto stated since the objects couldn't counter a god. I, I think you should maybe start back at the beginning. Tsunade stated as her mind was comprehending what he just revealed. Naruto shrugged, when I was called away, I was taken to what is called the realm in between. It's a sort of limbo between worlds. There I met two beings named Minerva and Jupiter and they are the ones that tasked me with the job of killing a rogue member of their people since millennia ago they ruled humanity with an iron fist until humanity broke free and revolted. Jupiter and Minerva were among those who wanted to broker peace after a time while the enemy, named Juno, wanted not only to take back authority but she wanted to be ruler of her own people as well. However, they were so focused on the war that they missed a bigger problem. The sun was building up too much power and it was released in a massive solar flare that destroyed the planet with only a small handful of both races surviving. Naruto stated before taking a breath. The few that did survive rebuilt as they could but time and only being able to breed so much withered the other race away with humans becoming dominant and occasionally a rare few humans would be born that could utilize their precursor ancestry and use some of the items that survived. Naruto explained further as he sat there. Eventually, humanity began struggling over the remaining items until soon they became the stuff of myths and legends while being connected to gods and legendary heroes. From there two groups came, one was the Order of Ancients that would later become known as the Templar Order and then there were the Hidden Ones which would later become known as the Assassin Brotherhood. Both orders wanted the same thing, but had very different methods in achieving it. Naruto stated taking a drag of his pipe. And what did they want? Hinata asked and Naruto sighed. Peace and a united world. Naruto stated simply. And how do they differ in methods? Based on the name, I can assume that the Brotherhood was willing to kill for their goal. Shino stated and Naruto nodded. Yes, but that's not where their methods differed. Naruto stated making many look at him in curiosity. The assassins wanted it to be mankind's choice to have peace and prosperity. The Templars decided mankind couldn't be trusted so they had to be forced into submission with the precursor items or through other methods. Naruto stated surprising them all since going by the names you'd think the assassins were in the wrong. Their methods further diverged as the Templars believed in the ends justify the means, so they'd happily slaughter thousands to convert or control the millions. The assassins though were more precise in their elimination and even built a creed and rules to ensure they never became like the Templars, though there were a few who were a disgrace to the order. Naruto stated thinking of Al Mulam, Achilles, and some others. Based on your tone, it's safe to say to you were with the assassins. Danzo stated making Naruto nod. Considering the Templars of the time I landed and gladly committed a mass murder of over 3,000 innocent civilians, counting children, it wasn't hard on which side to choose. Naruto stated horrifying them all. So, I learned, I studied, I trained, I fought, I bled, I killed, I grew myself both as a ninja and as a warrior, thief, assassin, chameleon, scientist, weapon master, businessman, leader, trainer, engineer, craftsman, and so on and so forth. Naruto stated as he took another puff of his pipe. How did you grow your skills as a ninja? I didn't think Kyuubi would know much of the ninja arts. Hayashi asked since it was a fair point. Part of the incentive to ensure I had plenty of skills and training for my mission was that Shinigami would fully place my parents' souls in my seal as well as alter it so I absorbed their knowledge and skills along with Kyuubi, who was made whole by Shinigami giving back the half my father sealed inside himself. Thus, for the first 50 years of time there, I got to know and train under my parents with Kyuubi helping from his own experiences in life before and after his first sealing and then for the following 200 years I became friends with Kyuubi with him instructing me on how to use his power fully before he too passed on. Naruto stated making many look at him in surprise as he sat back. So, you're the new QB? Kiba asked unsure and Naruto laughed. Oh Kami, no. I'm just a human with beyond Biju level reserves. Contrary to popular belief, the Biju aren't actual demons, just sentient masses of pure chakra that could take physical form. 
So, despite what the idiots of the village said, I'm not a demon and never was. Naruto stated before looking at Itomi, I know what you were told by the bastard, Itomi, but the Jubi isn't an all-powerful demon. Naruto stated making Itomi nod before Naruto turned back to the others. What is the Jubi? Ino asked as Naruto took another puff from his pipe. The Jubi is the entity that the Sage of Six Paths defeated long ago. Naruto stated shocking everyone. I thought he was just a myth. Tsunade stated and Naruto shrugged. All myths and legends have some form of truth within them. The sage is no different, only he didn't defeat some massive demon that showed up out of the blue and then gifted chakra from the goodness of his heart. Naruto stated as he took another puff. Then what did he fight and why did he do it? Danzo asked in a calm tone. He fought his mother with his brother's help. Naruto stated making them whiten their eyes. Her name is Kagaya Atsutsuki, the leader of the Atsutsuki clan. She came to this planet while pregnant and planted the seed of a tree called the Shinju. She waited till it grew and then ate the fruit it bared giving her new and extreme powers that passed to her children in her womb. She gave birth and had a peaceful enough existence until her mate inexplicably died and she went into a rage and came close to destroying the planet and wiping out all life. Then, then her sons fought her thinking she went mad from the power and killed her husband not knowing that their father's death was due to an outside influence. They won, barely, and sealed her inside the Shinju, but her pain and anger only caused the tree to morph into a large and terrifying creature that became known as the Jubi. The sage, named Hagoromo, became the first Jinshuriki by sealing her essence and power into himself and then created the moon to contain the body. Naruto stated as everyone just looked at him in shock. Afterwards, Hagoromo's brother went to take over the clan and keep them away from the planet while Hagoromo watched over it and ensured the seal on his mother was strong. However, his body wouldn't last forever, so he began taking steps to weaken his mother if she ever got out, thus he used her essence to gift the world chakra. Then he split more of her essence into his offspring who would later become the forefathers to the Uchiha and Senju clans. A small branch eventually broke off and took up the name Kagaya for their new clan while the Hyuga and Uzumaki clans branched are too. Anyway, the eldest named Indra inherited the eyes of his father which became the Sharingan, the Akugan, and Rinnegan later on and is the one who invented ninjutsu. The younger son, Azura, inherited the body of the sage, meaning his longevity and pure power, and believed in Ninshu while also developing the wood release. Naruto stated enthralling the people with his story. Hagoromo took another step to weakening his mother when he was close to death. Knowing that him dying would release all of her essence, he split it into nine separate parts and granted them sentience. Naruto stated making everyone widen their eyes in realization, yes, the biju were those nine parts, each a piece of an even greater whole. However, Hagoromo was so busy focusing on the distant possible future, that he didn't see the problems right in front of him. The issue was his two sons, both were exact opposites in ideals and way of doing things. Indra believed in power and military might to ensure the people submitted and obeyed the status quo since he'd seen that people using chakra would never allow a permanent peace. Azura believed in being peaceful and being friends with everyone and wanted no more violence or hostility to exist. As such, this caused friction between the brothers and it only heightened as Hagoromo drew closer to death because he'd have to name his successor. Hagoromo hadn't thought about it and now would have to choose between his two sons, but regardless of his choice his sons would never be close again. Naruto stated taking a breath as he rolled his neck. I'll take stab and say he picked Azura. Shikamaru stated making Naruto nod. Yes, and Indra left their home while vowing to make his brother pay for taking his birthright, which was done after their father passed. Both brothers then went to the Biju for help in their goals and the eventual fight that would happen. Kyuubi was the only one to turn his back on both sons stating their father would be ashamed of them squabbling as if both wanted the same toy and that both of their ideals were foolish as one was too warlike and the other was too peaceful. He even spoke out against siblings daring to take sides and as such created a massive rift between them all as Indra and Azura began their personal war. Azura eventually won and killed his brother, but that just started the cycle of feuding that wouldn't end due to their father being a moron. Naruto stated with some annoyance at the end. What did he do since he was dead? Hana asked and Naruto sighed. 
The man was paranoid that his mother would one day escape and continue her rampage, so he marked his sons with two markers, Indra got the moon marking and Azura got the sun marking only with both markings would the seal be strengthened and reused if necessary. As such, the markings forced them to reincarnate every few generations to reenact the feud between Azura and Indra. They'd start as friends, eventually become like brothers, and then Indra's carnation would slowly change and draw the two to fight again with the cycle continuing until they were forced to work together or they overcame the influence of their ancestors to be their own people. Naruto stated making them raise their eyebrows. That sounds like... Tsunade started and Naruto nodded. Hashirama and Madara were the last two incarnations to live before now. Sasuke and I were the most recent and thanks to me the last. Naruto stated surprising them all as he took another puff of his pipe. What did you do to end the cycle? Shino asked and Naruto took a long drag of his pipe. When I was away, the old bastard and Azura came to me trying to convince me to do things their way instead of the way I had learned to do things and change my mind about Sasuke while I was away. Naruto stated making many cock and eyebrow. I'm sorry to say this to Otomi, Sasuke, and Makoto, but after 20 years, I made peace with the fact that if Sasuke continued on the path he was walking, I was going to kill him before he ended up killing others that were in his way to gaining power and getting his revenge. No forgiveness, no third chance, just my blade ending his life. Naruto stated making the group grimace since Sasuke was going toward that area rapidly before he changed. Hagoromo and Azura began interfering with my powers and chakra and wouldn't stop until I agreed to do things their way which also included keeping Kaigaya sealed for eternity and for me to expel enough chakra to form a new nine-tailed biju. Naruto stated making them all frown. I take it you found a third option. Koharo stated and Naruto nodded. I summoned Lord Shinigami and had him eat them. Naruto stated making many whiten their eyes. The Reaper Death Seal? Jiraiya asked and Naruto nodded. Then, not to sound harsh, but why aren't you dead? Jiraiya asked in confusion, he wasn't upset just surprised. Because the idiots were already warned to stay out of my life while I was in the other world and they were directly interfering since a portion of the scars on my body were from fights I got into while my chakra was screwed up and thus so was my healing factor. There was also the fact both of them had been cheating death since each reincarnation actually got the souls of the two placed into their respective incarnations while the sage would appear should the need arise. The souls would influence their incarnations to make them do things their own way and the sage would also interfere to push them into being friends, rivals, and near brothers. As such, the Shinigami had been trying to get their souls for a while and I offered him up a three for one special. Naruto stated making them all frown. Three? Choji asked and Naruto nodded. Without Azura and Hagoromo to keep the connection, Indra lost his connection to the mortal plane and Shinigami snatched him up from Sasuke's body. If I had to bet, I'd say it was right around then that Sasuke began to mellow out again and be the nicer asshole we all know and like. Naruto stated with a smirk making Sasuke's eye twitch while Makoto giggled slightly. Was Indra really that effective on Sasuke? Itomi asked, since she had seen some of Sasuke's spiral when she and Kisame went after Naruto the first time, and Naruto nodded. Combined with the corrupting influence of Orochimaru's curse seal, yes. The two fed on each other in their pursuit to corrupt Sasuke and make him seek power and strength above everything, though eventually Indra would have won out and made Sasuke kill Orochimaru and purge the curse seal from him to be the only influence upon Sasuke's mind. Like Madara, Sasuke would have been normal until his adulthood where Indra would have really began influencing and making Sasuke into his image more, Orochimaru just expedited the process with his curse seal's influence. Naruto stated making many nods since anything from Orochimaru was likely to be a corrupting influence. Doesn't that mean that if Kagaya does get free, we don't have a way to seal her? Choza asked making many stiffen before Naruto shook his head. Naruto raised his hands and his left hand gained a blue crescent moon marking while his right hand had a red sun both of which were glowing, blue for the moon and red for the sun. Lord Shinigami decided that any talents they had shouldn't go to waste, so he took their powers and placed them in my seal to be transferred over time. Naruto stated before placing his left hand down and taking another puff of his pipe. Wouldn't that make you the new sage of six paths? Inoichi asked and Naruto nodded. In generic sense and terms, yes. Naruto stated calmly as if he was talking about the weather and not caring for their reactions. 
Naruto then sighed, back to the matter at hand though, the world I was on was far larger than the one we live on and each country had a different language to speak or multiple languages spoken within, this made thing harder with expanding the brotherhood throughout the world and keeping in touch. Naruto stated wanting to get back to the primary reason they were there. How many countries did they have? Shibi asked and Naruto snorted. 195 and that's not counting independent territories and islands. Then combine that with the fact there were 6,500 languages in total makes it even harder. Naruto stated shocking them all. Over the course of the 900 years I was there, I learned close to all of them fluently while a few were adequate since no one really spoke them anymore and it was hard to find source material to learn it let alone practice communicating with it. Still, it gave me more options in the world so I learned them and various other things since 900 years shows a lot of progress in various fields whether medicine, politics, transportation, weapons, or technology. Naruto stated taking another puff from his pipe, such as? Hayashi asked and Naruto tapped his revolvers. You could classify these as a handheld version of a cannon and these are only one type that the other world created. I just prefer these ones along with another type that I have in a seal though I have a collection of every weapon ever created on the other world. Naruto stated as he ignored their surprised reactions. Why? Tsunade asked and Naruto shrugged. Needed something to do when I wasn't fighting, fucking, teaching, killing, or learning, so I took up collecting different things, learning different instruments, practicing meditations, and a variety of other stuff since as an Uzumaki I hate having to sit still so I needed something to do for hobbies to last the centuries. Naruto stated casually making a few blink at him. Naruto also noticed the few women blushing a bit. What? Did you think I wouldn't have sex in 900 years? Naruto asked causing some more blushes causing him to snort. Yeah, no. I wasn't a man whore, but I definitely wasn't a prude either. I'd put every one of Jiraiya Saika Ika characters to shame if we were to compare, resumes if you will. Naruto stated making the women blush more while the males were trying to keep neutral expressions since they could imagine the amount of sex one could have in 900 years. Jiraiya was mentally crying tears of pride for his godson being such a skilled man, and obviously pervert. People's attention turned to Evie as she giggled, it doesn't hurt that you were around courtesans for several decades either. Evie stated knowing her love had gained quite a bit of experience and ruined several women during the 15th and 16th century. Courtesans? Tsunade asked and Naruto chuckled a bit. A more, pleasant term for prostitutes. Only the courtesans were trained to mingle with high society as a date or escort when needed so a gentleman or nobleman wouldn't have to attend such a thing by himself. Naruto stated making them all look at him in surprise as Jiraiya was trying to hold in his tears of pride for his godson. Not to be rude, but why would you be around them so much? Some asked while wondering if the man before her really was a man whore. Well, there are a few reasons. The chief among them is that the courtesans were part of the information network for the brotherhood with the matrons being full-fledged assassins. Naruto stated making a few nods since sex tended to make people talk afterwards and that information could be used especially since a beautiful woman could drop a man's guard quickly. The second reason, well. Just factor in my stamina and Uzumaki genes and you get me kind of needing to vent at times. Naruto stated making a few frowns before the women widened their eyes and started blushing atomic reds as Naruto shrugged since he wasn't shy or a prude and had zero to be ashamed of. Sex is a nice stress reliever along with helping to just calm down and enjoy life at times. Just so happened I needed plenty of help to fully relax. Naruto stated taking another puff from his pipe. Am moving on please. Tsunade stated trying to control her blush and mentally noting that if Jiraiya didn't keep himself in control, since it was obvious the man wanted to cry and praise Naruto for what he had done, she'd send him to the hospital and ensure only male nurses and doctors were treating him. White Suchan, I didn't think you blushed so easily. Naruto teased with a smile causing Tsunade to blush more while a few of the women gave her a slight glare. Just move on. Tsunade stated wanting the attention off of her. Naruto chuckled and nodded. Yes, well, time moved forward and I helped the brotherhood for most of the time I was there. However, a few instances had me siding with the Templars as some of the branches of the Brotherhood corrupted and had to be removed as they were doing the very things that the Templars were and needed to be stopped and the Templars of the time weren't doing the inhumane acts. Naruto stated whiling thinking on several of the members that went dark. 
You keep saying brotherhood, Naruto-san, does that mean you didn't have women fully inducted? Shibi asked before adding, I know you said the matrons of some brothels were members, but that doesn't necessarily mean they were classified as equal members. Shibi stated wanting to be clear that he was in fact listening. Naruto smiled a bit, on the contrary, women were in the order since the founding, the very first leader was a woman. Naruto stated remembering his time with Haya and Bayek since he had a detour during his time on earth due to something else coming up that needed his attention. Then why the brotherhood? Sum asked in curiosity and Naruto chuckled a bit. Because, no one thinks to look for a woman among a group with such a name. Naruto stated with a smirk causing many to whiten their eyes. The order was built during a time where, well, women weren't fighters. No woman tried to serve in the military or take up a sword or anything to fight. The place where the order was created didn't care about gender, if you wanted to fight then they would teach you, but women can be subjected to things that a man usually isn't thus they called it the brotherhood to not only allow the women to have an advantage in killing enemies but also to ensure they couldn't be easily spotted and then interrogated. Naruto stated with many knowing what he was referring to since men typically weren't subjected to rape or the like as it wasn't usually a form of effective interrogation on a male unless it was a male doing the interrogating. Anyway, finally the threat I was supposed to handle appeared, though the bitch hid away from me for 15 years before she and I had our fight which involved her entire being getting destroyed along with her lovers. I then spent the next 10 years finding the last of the items and breaking down the Templars and Assassin Orders, killing off whoever had become corrupt and didn't believe in the betterment of the world before uniting the survivors into the Freemen, who were tasked with ensuring the Templar and Assassins that possibly rose up later on couldn't influence humanity's direction in life. Then I was back in the realm in between and then I was in the valley of the end then I started getting some work done before Gara was kidnapped and the rest you know. Naruto stated taking another drag from his pipe as they all processed everything. And that side trip as you call it? Asuma asked since he hadn't mentioned that yet. The time period I was dropped in was for my protection as the Brotherhood had a foundation, plenty of allies, and a base that was well fortified. Once I was sufficiently trained, and there wasn't something pressing to hold my attention, I was sent back almost 2000 years to when the war between the Brotherhood and Templars truly started. Back then the Templars went by the order of the ancients and sought to take the power of the precursors that were believed to be gods at one point. I met a pair of twins named Cassandra and Alexios in a country called Greece. I joined and helped Cassandra on her journeys and learning new skills including to sail and run a ship. Cassandra was the first to truly make the order of the ancients her enemies and fought them tooth and nail. After 40 years there, I was sent forward another 300 and something years where I was in a country named Egypt where the Brotherhood would truly be born by the hands of a man named Bayek and his sister Aya. I helped them as they started out for revenge as five members of the Order of the Ancients killed Bayek's six-year-old son before then raping and murdering his wife and Aya's daughter. We hunted them across the country we were in and eventually Aya left for another country to kill the two highest-ranked members. They reunited with me and I told of them of what our group could be and helped form the central tenants that later became the creed for the order before I was sent back to where I left. Naruto stated as he took another long drag on his pipe. And who is she? Hinata asked, motioning to Evie. Evie Fry, she was one of my students on the other world. Minerva acted and brought her here after I was in Suna. She was one of the women that over the years fell in love with me. I hadn't truly noticed though as she showed interest in another man and I assumed she had married him, but apparently she hadn't and Minerva brought her here to help me with some things and get a chance to be together. Naruto stated making different women eye her slightly. What are these tenants and creed you spoke of? Danzo asked as Naruto took a long drag from his pipe. These are the sacred tenants of our brotherhood that we have sworn to uphold, to stay our blade from the blood of the innocent. To hide in plain sight as a blade in the crowd and above all, never compromise the brotherhood. Naruto and Evie both recited before continuing, La She Mutlak, LKN Kulu She Mumkin. These are the words spoken by our ancestors that lay at the heart of our creed. Where others blindly follow the truth, remember, nothing is true. Where others are limited by morality or law, remember, everything is permitted. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. Naruto and Evie both continued with Naruto gazing at those around them making a few stiffened stories seeing his determined and intense gaze. It was like looking at the past Kage mixed with Mito and Kushina. That is, an interesting creed. 
Inoichi stated after a long moment. Wait, if you have three rules in your tenants, then why say that everything is permitted? Ino asked and Naruto chuckled lightly. Why indeed, Ino, why indeed? Naruto stated while giving her an amused look making her frown and pout a bit. So what are your plans now, Naruto-san? Danzo asked and Naruto sighed as he took another long drag. I'm going to rebuild the order here in these lands and start fixing several problems and wrongs that shouldn't have occurred in the first place. Naruto stated making many of them nod. Kanoha would benefit greatly with such a group. Hayashi stated before he and the others frowned in confusion as Naruto shook his head. My brotherhood will not be swearing loyalty to Kanoha. We will be a free entity that can move and attack through all the countries, and I mean all of them. Naruto stated taking a large drag on his pipe before releasing a few rings of smoke. You meant that there are those in Kanoha and Fire Country that you may target. Shibi stated able to see the underlying meaning in his words while Naruto merely smiled. Whatever do you mean, Shibi-sama? I am a loyal shinobi dutifully serving Tsunade-sama and Lord Nabunaga. I'd never kill anyone within their territories, unless of course, they were committing treason, war crimes, or other atrocities and I had proof of such things. Of course, I would use such methods that it wouldn't be traceable back to me let alone anyone else in Kanoha especially since my headband can't be seen except those I get close to kill. Naruto stated while eyeing them and seeing a few take the hint. Meaning anyone serving under you doesn't work for Kanoha, thus there is no proof that Kanoha had any hand in this nor does it show the fire daimyo possibly gave the order either. Shikamaru stated with Naruto nodded with the others catching on. Correct. Danzo's route was used in a similar manner during the last two wars, but they were used too often and got caught at times thus their gear and such was traced back to Kanoha and they were no longer a stealth unit. I can provide all the necessary gear and armaments thus nothing can be traced back to Kanoha so long as those I use aren't known members of Kanoha. There's also the fact that I thoroughly vet any and all engagements before I send anyone anywhere to ensure they can fully handle what happens. However, I need to be clear on something. Naruto stated as his eyes hardened and his presence was felt throughout the room causing a few to choke on their own spit for a minute. My brotherhood will be primarily concerned with protecting civilians and others from conflicts and problems that they don't belong in and I will kill anyone and everyone causing such chaos and problems regardless of their affiliation to any clan, family, or village. At times Kanoha will benefit and at times it won't, I am not making Kanoha my chief concern above the rest of the world. Naruto stated seriously as he looked at them all. One could conclude that perhaps, that also includes advisors to the Hokage, Naruto-san. Shino stated causing everyone to glance at Naruto and Naruto merely looked at him. I'm not sure I know what you mean, Shino. Tsunade-sama clearly stated that Himura passed away in his sleep, not that he was killed or anything. Naruto stated with a pleasant smile. I'll also have you note that I have several eyewitnesses that will place me outside of Kanoha during the time he did die so it couldn't have been me if there was some form of foul play involved. Naruto stated still smiling making Shino give a small nod. Of course, what was I thinking? Shino stated getting where Naruto was going with this since Himura being killed would drum up a lot of attention and dirt and he wanted to ensure as little of it could be traced back to him, and possibly Kanoha, as possible. Plus, someone like Himura being captured would only add to the headaches as he would try to lash out before he was put down. Naruto merely nodded, now, I'll also be fully taking my seat as clan head of the Uzumaki and starting the Namikaze as a coalition clan with the Uzumaki, especially since I live in the Uzumaki estates right now. Naruto stated taking another puff of his pipe before seeing some of the questioning looks. For the love of people, my father didn't have an estate to himself since he was one man from no clan, he moved in with my mother later on. That estate is the Uzumaki clan estate. Why do you think none of you ever saw any indication it was being built? Because it was built before any of your times. Naruto stated while rubbing his forehead while a few grinned sheepishly at him. Naruto-san, not to be rude, but are you sure your plans for your brotherhood won't upset the fire daimyo? While he's a noble man, you possibly targeting those in his court may not sit well with him. Tsum stated and Naruto just glanced at her while smirking. You've already discussed it with him. Shikako stated seeing the smirk and Naruto nodded. I was escorting him and in the capital for over a day, wasn't hard to convince him of my methods and plans either since he's long suspected that there were several rats and snakes in his city and country and he's been unable to flush them out and put an end to them, so why not let someone else have a go at it? 
His only condition was that I keep any innocent civilians out of the crossfire, which I had no intention of allowing to happen from the start so it worked out fine. Naruto stated causing them to nod. Now comes the next matter at hand, but I'm afraid I need to speak to Tsunade-sama, Makoto-sama, Asuma-sama, and Hayashi-sama privately as it will be dealing with some personal matters pertaining to them and I would prefer to not let gossip spread the news faster than is necessary. Naruto stated causing many of them to raise their eyebrows in confusion. Looking around, Tsunade saw nods, very well, those that weren't mentioned are dismissed while we talk. Tsunade stated causing everyone to nod as the other clan heads, Mabuki, Jiraiya, Koharo, Danzo, and the clan heirs all left along with Naruto's for allies. Once they were gone, Tsunade sealed the room and nodded to Naruto, I have a way to reinforce the village to make up for a good portion of the so-called strength that I cost it during my exhibition match. However, in order for it to work, I need a few things that only you four can get me access to. Naruto stated seriously and they all frown in confusion. And just what is that? Hayashi asked before Naruto took a breath and explained his plan and his intentions causing them all to widen their eyes in disbelief and shock. Why you can do that? Asuma asked while trying to process what he was just told. If you four can get me what I asked for, then yes as it will at least be substantially easier than without those items. Naruto stated as he took another puff from his pipe. Are you sure you can handle the strain from doing such a thing? Makoto asked with some worry in her voice and Naruto nodded. Yes, it won't be pleasant for me, but I'm used to unpleasantness and I'll be fine within hours of finishing. Naruto stated taking another inhale of smoke from his pipe. I should be able to get you what you need, Naruto-san, and you will have my clan's full support in anything you need should you be able to deliver on this. However, I will have your word that you can and will fully deliver on what you've just stated. Hayashi stated without any hesitation since Naruto's offer was more than enough to give such a thing. I give you my word upon my Uzumaki blood and my honor as a warrior. I will deliver on what I just said in full. Naruto stated making Hayashi nod before the other three soon followed. Good, it will take a few days as I need to acquire all the materials necessary and then properly set up for it. Afterwards, it will just be a matter of time and concentration on my part. Naruto stated making them nod. Then that should be all for today then. I'll contact you all when I am prepared for everything. Naruto stated as he stood and put out his pipe while Tsunade unsealed the room before the three clan heads walked away fully caught up in their thoughts on the matter that Naruto had just discussed with them. Turning back to Tsunade, he saw she was still worried about things, relax, Suchan, I promise you that everything will be fine. I know what I'm doing despite my past history with you and the others. Naruto stated smiling as he hugged her making her nod in his chest. Hey, how I take you out on date after all of this? Naruto stated making her look up at him with a blush. That is, if you don't mind an old man for a DMPH. Naruto continued before Tsunade kissed him which he eagerly returned. No, I don't mind at all, I actually have a bit of a thing for older men. I find their maturity to be very, sexy. Tsunade stated as she pulled back slightly and Naruto smirked as he ran his hands on her sides. Lucky me. Naruto stated before he pecked her lightly on the lips and stepped back before kissing her hand and leaving with his four allies. Once they were outside the tower, Naruto stopped as Danzo and Koharo approached, arm in arm, what can I do for you? Danzo-san, Kohara-san. Naruto asked while each of his allies tensed and were ready to act if the duo tried anything. The duo merely smiled at him, thank you, for exposing Himura, I feel better than I have in years. Danzo stated with Koharu nodding with her own serene smile on her face. It was no trouble, even if I wasn't asked to, I would have handled it anyway since the man was a piece of scum of the highest order. Naruto stated causing them to nod. On another matter, Naruto-san, I have someone that I think would be an asset to your group. Koharo stated making Naruto raise an eyebrow. You see, I had my own small contingent of root and I trained some members and kept them away from Himura. One such member that I recently began teaching, I think would benefit from working in your group rather than staying with root. Koharo continued causing Naruto to nod. I see, I'd be interested in meeting them, though it would have to be in a few days as I am going to be working on something to help the village and quite a few people. Naruto stated and the two nodded. Just tell me when it is convenient and I'll be happy to introduce you. Koharo stated and Naruto nodded. I'll do that, have a good day you too.
Naruto stated with a smile as the two smiled and walked off together as Naruto began leading his group back home. Kimimaro, I'm going to need yours and the others help with what I'm doing as what it involves will be dangerous to others if we're not careful. Naruto stated as he shifted into a more serious demeanor causing Kimimaro to nod. Whatever I can do, Naruto-sama. Kimimaro stated making Naruto nod as he led his group home while mentally preparing for the part of his plan that was going to really suck for him. However, the reward was worth the annoyance and pain that would be tolerated so he could suck it up. For now, he'd train with Evie and Haku to get their skills further sharpened and teach Evie the newer ways of the Brotherhood after her time on Earth. He also noted to get a certain item from just outside the village as it would help with his plan. Later that night, Lemon Start. Naruto entered his room expecting to see Haku, Evie, and Tsunami in different states of undress, only instead he found Tsunami sitting naked except for a pair of black heels and stockings. He took a moment to really look her over and noted her breasts were actually an e-cup with just a slight bit of sag, which Naruto didn't mind at all. He already had a great view of her ass and womanhood a few days ago so he knew she was an equal parts ass and tits woman, which suited Naruto just fine. To be honest, Naruto wasn't a singular part kind of man, he liked breasts, asses, legs, faces, hips, full body, hair, and all of it. He wasn't picky like some men with a woman having to look an exact type of way in order to be attractive or a possible candidate for a girlfriend and future wife. No, Naruto appreciated all the assets and parts of a woman and it showed with the different women he had slept with as there were some that could rival Tsunade in the chest department and there were others that had legs for days, had plump asses that begged to be spanked, full kissable lips, beautiful faces, wide sexy hips, and so on and so forth. Hence why Naruto could fully appreciate Tsunami without any complaints and made that known as he stripped down and approached Tsunami showing his full erection pointing towards her. Tsunami blushed at the sight and the intense look he was giving her before he gave her a simple yet passionate kiss causing her to eagerly reciprocate it. When he pulled back, Tsunami had her tongue still sticking out from when she was dueling his tongue in her mouth and followed it out when he pulled back, are you sure about this, Tsunami-chan? There's not a huge rush. Naruto stated before he found himself pinned under Tsunami as she was gazing at him with a profound amount of love and lust. I'm sure, naruto Kuwen. Not only has my body been neglected in that form for over a decade, but it's been burning for you since you left Wave the first time. I want you, I want your dick, and I want sex, badly. I don't need foreplay, or build up, that can come later. Right now, I just want you to fully make love to me and take me. Tsunami stated with her eyes and tone being crystal clear to Naruto. She was really fucking horny and he had better handle her or there would be problems. Luckily, Naruto had been adequately trained in the art of pleasuring and handling women with that kind of need and desire, so he was fully up to the task. Hence why he quickly rolled them over and moved Tsunami's legs over his shoulders while brushing his dick against her wet folds causing her to mule in pleasure as Naruto got his dick a bit wet to insert it easier. Naruto then slid in causing her to gasp in pleasure as his dick stretched her wide open and was filling her in places she didn't know existed until she nearly screamed in pleasure as his dick hit her womb and actually put pressure against it like it wanted in. She then groaned slightly as he withdrew from her slowly until only the head was inside her before he slammed back in causing her to squeal in pleasure before he repeated the process while enjoying the sight of her large breasts bouncing with each thrust. It was after the fifth that Tsunami screamed in pleasure as her pussy drenched his cock causing him to smirk. You really were pent up. Naruto stated since he was only getting started in pleasuring her. You have no idea. Tsunami stated between pants for air before she grabbed his head tightly, now, shut up and get back to work. Tsunami growled obviously still horny and Naruto just chuckled before grabbing her legs and pressing them to next to her head. Be careful, Tsunami, there's a reason why I'm confident in my skills, both in and out of bed. Naruto stated while giving a predatory grin that made her pussy leak even more. Before she could give a response, Naruto drew back and slammed back in, the sound of his hips slapping against her and his balls slapping her ass overrode the choked gasp of pleasure Tsunami released. Naruto merely smirked and latched onto her left nipple and began sucking on it as he continued drawing back and slamming into Tsunami's womanhood making her gasp, moan, and scream in pleasure as Naruto's dick tamed her milf pussy. Naruto mentally smirked at the woman as he kept pleasuring her while finding she was tight for a woman who gave birth. However, she hadn't had sex since Inari was conceived since from what he knew Kaiza was more of a friend-slash-brother figure to Tsunami while helping raise Inari. Over a decade of no sex could do that to a woman, 
but Naruto had no intention of letting it continue or giving her any reason to complain about her sex life from now on. Hence why he was planning to make her see why he usually fucked a woman instead of making love to them as the women tended to turn into mush when he did. Releasing the tit he had been sucking on, Naruto switched to the other one only this time he ran his tongue around it to stimulate her more slowly while he continued to rock and thrust his hips to drive her wild as he hit every sweet spot she had. Of course, this just further fueled Tsunami's desire and love for him as her body was basking in the pleasure and euphoric state of coming near constantly, which was due to Naruto stimulating all of her sensitive spots and pushing all the right buttons to make her orgasm around his thick dick. After a while of continuing to do this, Naruto removed her legs from his shoulders, knowing fully well she could only be in that position for so long before it would give discomfort either immediately or the following day, and instead cupped her legs under knees to use as leverage to fuck her even more. Tsunami was thankful for the change in position since her lower back was starting to signal that it hurt. However, that thought was immediately washed away a few minutes later as Naruto slammed into her womb and bit her nipple at the same time sending jolts of pleasure through her and causing her to come violently. Naruto pulled back with a smirk as Tsunami was gasping for breath and her legs wouldn't stop flailing or twitching from the aftershocks of her orgasm. Naruto let her regain her bearings and mental faculties before he grabbed her by her ass and lifted her up before she was sitting on his lap causing her to moan as her weight pushed his dick in even deeper into her. Tsunami only moaned more as he grabbed her ass and began bouncing her on his dick while taking her into a passionate kiss. Tsunami, of course, reciprocated the kiss and began working her hips and vaginal muscles to further stimulate both herself and him as she wrapped her arms around him along with her legs, which caused her some added pleasure as her nipples scraped against his muscular torso adding little jolts of pleasure to her body. This continued on for another period of time with both having sweat on their bodies and the bed was soaked in their sweat and tsunamis leaking feminine juices as they continued their coupling. However, Naruto knew he was approaching the limit for his first release and tsunami was approaching a large release of her own as well, which is why he began slamming into her harder making her squeal in pleasure. I'm going to come soon, Tsunami-chan, do you want it inside? Naruto asked while Tsunami only clutched him tighter. Yes. Paint my insides white, I'm your woman now, my pussy is yours to fuck and come inside whenever you want. Tsunami nearly screamed as she was bouncing on his dick in rhythm with his thrusts. Do you want this forever, Tsunami? Do you want me to love and fuck you for all time? Naruto asked as he got closer and Tsunami nodded vigorously. Kami yes. Please. Take me. Fuck and love me forever and never let me go or leave me alone again. Tsunami screamed as she bounced even more. Then swear and shout that you are mine forever, Tsunami. Say it with such conviction, authority, and power that no one that can possibly hear you has even a chance of doubting your words. Let the world know who owns this body and who claims ownership of your heart. Naruto stated as he increased his speed. I swear upon soul that I belong to Naruto Uzumaki. He owns me and I belong to him mind, body, and soul. My cunt is his. My ass is his. My tits, my mouth, my whole body belongs to him. No other man shall ever enjoy my body nor will they ever have my love or desires. I belong to him and him alone, forever. Tsunami shouted before Naruto kissed her and she screamed as her pleasure skyrocketed as a golden glow of energy flowed over Naruto's body and then entered her own through her mouth, vagina, and ass as Naruto gripped it tight and shoved a few fingers inside for good measure. Tsunami then saw white and her eyes rolled into the back of her head as he came and felt every spurt of cum fill her still willing to birth womb as the energy he was giving her poured in without restraint and each spurt he released in her womb gave her another orgasm. She never noticed, nor would have cared if she had, a red spiral make its appearance on her chest over her heart and another one appearing over her womb. All Tsunami could process and feel was the pleasure from Naruto's body and his love flowing into her while something was keeping her from fully passing out which she was grateful for as she didn't want to miss any of the pleasure and sensations she was getting. Eventually, Naruto ceased the energy flow and stopped coming and laid her on the bed as he retracted his dick smiling down at her with love and lust shining in his eyes. Lemon End Tsunami laid there panting feeling the pleasure still coursing through her as Naruto's dick stayed lodged in her pussy and his cum filled her full. That was amazing. Tsunami stated between pants before she released a squeal of surprise as Naruto flipped her over and palmed her ass cheeks. Oh, we aren't done yet, Tsunami-chan. 
You got loving, now it's time to fuck and I'm going to be handling this body of yours for the entire night and you'll probably have a hard time walking tomorrow unless I heal you. However, tonight, you're just going to be fuck silly until you pass out, then I'll still keep fucking you and ensure your body gets what it so desires now that you're mine and mine alone. Naruto growled into her ear making her shudder, but before she could retort, Naruto was thrusting again sending her back into a pleasure-filled bliss through the entire night. I may have made a mistake, but by Kami at least it's a pleasurable one. Tsunami thought before her head was turned and she was kissed lustfully by Naruto as she could only take the fucking and pounding, he was giving her womanhood and knew she would be sore tomorrow. She was at Naruto's mercy now and the thought alone turned her on even more as he was just taking her and laying claim to what was now his, and she fucking loved it. Training Ground 99, Couple Days Later Naruto stood in the training ground wearing just a pair of pants and boots with his torso bare, now, remember, no matter what happens, and no one can touch me while I'm doing this. If they do, it will not end well for anyone. Naruto stated looking behind him at Tsunade, Hayashi, Asuma, Kanoamaru, Jiraiya, Udon, Moegi, Shizun, Hinata, Hanabi Hyuga, Makoto, Sasuke, Haku, Ibi, Itomi, Danzo, Koharu, and his other recruits that were all wearing masks and hoods to keep their identities a secret. Seeing them all nod and space themselves to keep anyone from trying to interact with Naruto, since he stated what he would be doing would draw a lot of attention in the village, Naruto turned to face the field before him. Only, it wasn't empty. Before Naruto were rows and rows of coffins of different shapes and sizes all neatly lined up into columns. The other noticeable thing was six clones of Naruto's laying down with blood smeared on their faces and each coffin also had blood smeared on them. Specifically, for the coffins at least, it was the blood of those who were within said coffins taken from the extensive medical files Kanoha kept which included a seal holding a blood vial of the individual that the file belonged to. The reason for this setup? Naruto was bringing back a lot of people from the dead which included several of the village's top ninja to ever come out of it. There were only three beings he wanted to bring back that he wasn't able to and they were the Senju brothers and Dan Kato. The latter two were due to the circumstances of their souls, namely being consumed by the Shinigami. While Naruto could free them for the afterlife, only one of the denizens that Naruto wanted brought back could be and the brothers decided on their fellow prisoner being brought back. Dan was just the matter of he had passed on fully and was spending time with his other relatives as he felt his time was long over and done with, though he did tell Naruto to take care of Tsunade. Hashirama had a similar message regarding a subject. So, Naruto was going to bring back all but the three of them as it was out of his hands and there was nothing he could do about it. However, three wasn't so bad compared to all that he could bring back. Sighing to himself, he reached to his waist and removed a black Hanya mask that had a red swirl emblazoned on it before placing it on his face. This was the mask of the Shinigami and Naruto needed it to free the souls in question from him plus use the Shinigami's power as a focal point to locate all the souls belonging to the people he was bringing back. Flexing his hands, Naruto took a deep breath to prepare himself for the backlash before he pushed his hands forward and a seal appeared across his body and receded down to his chest causing his chakra to spike making everyone take a step back on reflex from the power he was generating. They watched as Naruto was surrounded in a golden glow with blue electricity before the energy launched off of him in bolts of electricity with one striking each coffin and clone causing them all to glow as Naruto grit his teeth. Naruto was glad he had the bodies and the fresh blood or this would be way fucking harder, though for a few he only had the blood to use as a focal point to reconstruct the bodies for those that weren't buried in Kanoha. However, Naruto suddenly grit his teeth with a grunt as he felt the first backlash of using this much power. Even now, he could feel blood oozing down his back and chest as his scars were opening up one by one from the strain upon his body, but he pushed through it and continued sending out his power. Around him, the others widened their eyes at the sight of him getting wounded and Kimimaro moved and stopped Tsunade from instinctively moving forward, no, Lady Tsunade, he said no one can touch him. Kimimaro stated as he held back Tsunade from trying to get to him while the others close to Naruto clenched their hands and grit their teeth at not being able to do anything to help. Or so they thought before others started arriving at the training ground to see what was happening. Many were shocked at the sight of all the scars on Naruto's body while also wondering what the hell was going on. All of you, stay back, if you touch him it could spell disaster for us all. Danzo ordered to ensure no one got any ideas of trying something even if the others were spread far enough to stop interference. Karinai and the other females that had shown an interest in Naruto went over to the others while trying to stomach the sight of Naruto as more of his scars opened up and began bleeding as if he just took the wound. 
Lady Tsunade, what is he doing? Karinai asked with some fear and concern since even with the mask on, his hair was a dead giveaway to who it was. Tsunade schooled herself as best she could while keeping her heartache suppressed for as long as she could. He's bolstering Kanoha's forces. Tsunade stated making them frown before they widened their eyes in shock at realizing what she meant. They turned back towards Naruto as he suddenly grunted when a particularly nasty and large scar across his back opened up and they swore they could see his spinal column in the open wound, but Naruto stood strong and kept using his power. They further saw the strain placed on him as his hair starting going gray and white and his skin gained some wrinkles before they were gone due to his healing factor but they kept coming back the longer this was going. It just showed how taxing this was on Naruto and his healing factor. Near them Kanoamaru, Udon, and Moegi were holding Iraka back, Iraka sensei please. Don't interfere. Kanoamaru stated as he had some tears in his eyes from seeing his big brother enduring this much to help them. But Kanoamaru dash Iraka started before seeing Kanoamaru looking at him with a heartbroken expression. I know, but please. Boss said he can handle it and anyone touching him will ruin what he's trying to do, so please. Kanoamaru stated his tears were going down his face and Iraka clenched his jaw before nodding and standing straight. Off further to the side, Kakashi, having to use a cane to walk now, watched quietly as he would wait to see what Naruto was doing before making any conclusions. Ever since Naruto gave him that beating, Kakashi had been plagued by dreams of his sensei, Kushina, Rin Noera, and his own father berating him, chewing him out, and even getting some of their own hits in on him. Now a paranoid person could say that it was Naruto's doing somehow to further mentally torture him, but the dream versions knew things that only the real people would know and Naruto couldn't possibly have known. Furthermore, ever since he lost, he hadn't felt as much animosity towards Naruto and was starting to question just why he hated the boy so much since he didn't choose to be born or become the holder of Kyuubi, so why was he so pissed off at Naruto? He didn't know and it was confusing the hell out of him. Back with Naruto, he hissed in pain as another particularly brutal scar opened up on him, but he pushed through since he was getting closer, which was evidenced by the clones being completely covered in the electricity that you couldn't make them out anymore and the fact the coffins were starting to break apart. He grit his teeth before he increased the power output causing the arcs of electricity to become bigger and speed up the process, which also meant speeding up the rate of his injuries opening up. A few minutes later, Naruto had to spit blood out as his lungs got some blood filled inside before his healing factor forced it out. Come on, almost there. Naruto ground out as the coffins were gone and now there were just several bodies covered in the electricity as Naruto kept it up knowing he was almost done. He could feel his body screaming in agony and felt himself aging even with his healing factor, but stopping now would only cause an untold amount of problems, both for him and those he was reviving. Naruto then growled as his body began to burn and was showing it his flesh went from first degree burns all the way to being charred and it was creeping across his body and he had to force himself to stay on his feet as a wound opened up showing a clean hole through his chest that was the size of a fist. It was taking his full mental faculties to fight off the urge to scream and to stay standing and keeping his power flowing outward instead of inward. He kept pushing even when his left ring finger suddenly detached itself in a spurt of blood, his right hand was flayed completely clean down to the bone, his left knee broke, his right hip dislocated, and the burnt flesh was nearly across his entire body. Tsunade and several others finally had to turn away, not able to stand the sight anymore and Naruto's snarls and growls were enough to tell them all it really fucking hurt. It further impressed Ibiki at Naruto enduring fall of that abuse and punishment and was still in enough control to not scream or shout while continuing with whatever it was he was doing. However, just as the burns fully encompassed his head, his left arm was severed at the elbow. Naruto growled and roared as he pushed his right arm forward and his chakra output and the electricity intensified a hundredfold for a few seconds before Naruto cut the connection and collapsed to his hand and knees with the mask falling off and showing the inside was coated in blood. Naruto. Tsunade stated about to run over and heal him before Naruto stuck his mutilated arm out to stop her. Naruto planted his hand against the ground and panted and heaved while groaning as his body regenerated in front of everyone. First the bones of his left arm, then the muscles, tendons, ligaments, blood vessels, skin layers, and then nails. Then the rest of it began with Naruto heaving out globs of blood and felt his body stitching itself back together methodically and specifically. The burns were healed along with the hole in his chest before all the other wounds were healed with his right hand gaining the different tissues back as well. Though the sickening cracks and crunches of his bones healing made a few have to hold down their stomachs. 
His hair came back just as spiky and vibrant as before while his skin was tanned and hardened muscles were seen easily enough underneath the flesh. The thing that caught some of their eyes was the fact his scars were gone. Except for his seals and the tribal markings, his skin was flawless with no other noticeable marks, not even the whisker marks he had as a child were there any longer. Naruto caught his breath and steadied himself before standing before he flexed surging his power back over him before the seal on his chest spread back out over him and the power around Naruto began to diminish before fading completely once the seal covered him fully. Naruto then turned his attention back towards his targets and saw the arcs of electricity sparking rapidly as it got faster and faster before they intensified in brightness making a few cover their eyes. The electricity then launched into the air and swirled around before exploding in a shower of sparks that rained on the bodies. Within moments of the sparks all fading into the bodies, they all lurched forward gasping for breath shocking everyone as over 90% of the Echiha clan was alive, Hiruzen and Duwako Saratobi were back, Kushina and Mito Uzumaki, Rin Noera, Sakumo Hataki, Sara Uzumaki, Shirayuki, Tayuya of the Sound 4, Kin and Dosu of Sound, Hitomi Hyuga, and Nawaki Senju were all alive and wondering what happened. Welcome back. Naruto stated standing there making many of the returned people widen their eyes as memories came to them about speaking to Shinigami about a chance to return to life and help fix the problems of the world. However, K-A-A-S-A-N. For female voices shouted as Haku tackled her mother Shira, Karen tackled her mother Sarah, and Hanabi and Hinata tackled their mother in tight hugs while crying before the mothers returned the hugs while crying themselves. Naruto sighed before he promptly fell back and sat on the ground and attached the mask to his waist before he was glomped in a tight hug and chuckled seeing his mother, Hello Kasen. Naruto stated kissing her head as he stroked her hair while Kushina had a megawatt smile on her face with tears leaking down her face. Same for the rest of those who had family still alive though Naruto saw Sakumo frowning in disapproval of his son. Sakumo, it wasn't entirely his fault, don't hold him too accountable since there wasn't much he could do. Naruto called making Sakumo nod before they turned to see Nawaki sent flying into a tree, which was due to commenting that Tsunade had gotten old with a cheesy grin on his face. Naruto merely chuckled before he stood with Kushina having to lean on him to stay standing, Tsunade, they all need to relax for a few weeks to let their bodies adjust properly. Beyond that and getting some food and water in them, they should be fine. However, given the occurrences after the Achiha massacre, some of them may not be able to use the Sharingan or may take a long time to use the Dojitsu again. Naruto stated making Tsunade nod before she came over and hugged him. Thank you, Naruto-kun. Tsunade stated and Naruto smiled before rubbing her back. My pleasure. Naruto stated before he began walking away with Kushina still holding onto him and his recruits, minus Haku and Karen, following along with Tayuya, Kin, and Dosu as they knew their place was helping Naruto now. However, once he was entering the forest around the training ground, he stuck his arm out and caught Sakura by the throat as she leaped at him intending to use the strength technique to crush his head. Naruto merely looked at her a moment before frowning, then there's you. Naruto stated with a frown before Sakura screamed out as more golden electrical arcs sprouted and began coursing through Sakura and heading directly for her brain. Once he felt the arcs do their job, he stopped and set Sakura down gently to let her slump down against a tree. Iraka, please take Sakura to the hospital, she doesn't need to be restrained or arrested. Just ensure her mother is in the room when she wakes up. Naruto stated making Iraka frown in confusion before he nodded and moved over to pick up Sakura while Naruto kept walking. Where you off to, Naruto-san? Danzo asked as he was curious. To bed, I'm fucking exhausted. Naruto stated while keeping his right hand hidden from view as it was smoking and charred from that bit of power used on Sakura since his body was still recovering from his little resurrection act. Danzo merely nodded before he and Kohara walked over to their friends that Naruto had just brought back and were smiling at the sight before them. There was another of Senju blood. There were at least another two Uzumaki and both were S-ranked Kunoichi. The Uchiha clan was back minus the assholes and traitors and would thrive now. The Hyuga clan head had his elite Umbu captain of a wife again. The White Fang was back. Hiruzen and Biwako were back to lend their expertise and help train new generations. And Naruto assuredly had a few new recruits in those others he brought back. All in all, things were looking up for Kanoha, though they knew Naruto still had some cleaning to do in the village and would be ready to help him do it when he felt it was time to begin. This will temporarily be the last part as we wait for the author's update. Thank you for the support. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfiction.
Looking forward to having you on board again.